Welcome to the Elite <laughs> FTS it, Table wait, Talk wait Podcast with your Point. host, Dave Tate. Damn it. There you go. There oh, it is. There it is. Okay, we are live with another Table Talk. This one with Matt Rhodes and Jim Wendler. Oh, we have, there's Dave. Yeah, we have questions from the YouTube community, from Instagram, from pretty much all over the place. And as probably all for Jim yeah pretty much and we pretty much have solidified any time that we sit down it's always off topic anyhow yeah so I'm not really too sure how much it's gonna matter why haven't um, I been on camera yet <laughs> yes there you I go. Said, he does part of the contract <laughs> yeah flip him on camera there he is yeah. See, there he is. yeah see so he does it's it, delayed yeah. over there he, he was on camera like 10 seconds ago. oh okay oh so it's yeah. a delay I can't deal with that bullshit it's a fucked up delay <laughs> Is this so they can beep out the, the curse words? No. I no. know. God I have no it, idea. <laughs> I mean, beep. I have no idea, but do, do, do I look jacked? Yes. You know what? Your traps yeah. look fantastic the traps, today. It's yeah. the traps? Yeah. It's, I, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a Wendler. What, what's this called? The Wendler what? Athletic. Wendler athletic. athletic, yeah. So it makes me look fatter? Bigger. Fat bigger, jacked, fat jacked. Fat jacked, like yeah. fat dad. Your yeah. SAT looks huge. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm looking for is the fat dad. <laughs> part of your yeah, dad. yeah. This is all part of the product placement. <laughs> part of the part of the part of the what do you call this fucking thing? Podcast. Wait till Dave stands up, you can see his fleshlight. Yeah. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's it's tucked under. It's tucked under the hood. And the, the hood actually works. Well, we, call, this we, we call that foreskin, Dave. Yeah, yeah. like the, the Yoda hood. Is that hood. what it's called? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's the Yoda hood, you know, actually works. And it fits over headphones. So there's another reason to pick this thing up at JimWeller.com. That's right. Support my drug habit. <laughs> he takes a lot of aspirin. Yes. Is that what? Uh, Ass. Prin. Yeah. Prin. Man, this, this delay is screwing me up. Yeah, I can't watch it. Yeah. No, all right. All right so, I'm going to focus on my friends here. Thanks for putting me right in front of it so i got to stare at it. <laughs> yeah, there That's you go. Right. I'll pull through. That's cool. That's weird. good. So yes, sir. Matt was in town, found out he was coming in town, so we said I would sent him a text because <laughs> there's a chain of command yes. when communicating with Jim, yes. which <laughs> Matt goes to Juliet, which ends up, I don't even know if it gets to Jim or not. She just points me in the yeah, right direction, yeah. usually a day or two. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so. That's how we do all the interviews, podcasts. In fact, Dave, I have big news. And I don't want <clears throat> to rain on your parade as CEO, yeah. but I am speaking at the London Rotary Club. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> nice. So I was asked, and I talked to the guy. I don't know if I'm too loud. And I, uh, the guy who asked me is the father of one of the players. Yeah. And I said, listen, man. <clears throat> I have a really bad language problem, so I do not. <laughs> uh, I, I said I will try to curb it, uh, but I don't want to get you in trouble or fired. And he's like, "Nah, that's fine." But <clears throat> so I'm like, "Well, how long do I speak for?" And you know, who's my audience? Fifteen minutes. That's it. So that fucker only wants you to speak for fifteen. Dude, that's fine. Minutes. I get lunch. You, you I get can. to hang out with some CEOs and stuff. And uh, you talk about being out of place, but I'm I'm happy to do it. It's cool. Nice. So. Excuse my ignorance, but what the fuck is a rotary club? It's funny because... Uh, it's like a bike club? Yeah. It's a bicycle club. <laughs> yeah, bicycle. Yeah. I, the, say, yeah, I, I, I don't really know what they do, but I know, like, uh, I asked, you know, my wife's like, you know, oh, that's nice. And my little kid's like, well, what's a rotary club? Yeah. Uh, get on the Google. None, both of us yeah. are like, well, it's a thing with the stuff and the guys yeah. get... It'll be so. fun. Will the mayor be there? I don't. I know. You know who the mayor is, right? Yeah, I know. Like you got some talk. <laughs> dude, we bought uh, a lot of dip and porn from that dude. No, nice. talk about him. He, yeah, he used to own. Uh, <laughs> and maybe he still does own a small carryout that's literally right across the street from the the mount the no, main street elite FTS. That was the really technically the first yeah. second location, it's not really counting their the house. Yeah, and then it was it was the dip location. Yeah, but we then just he had walked, like, walked right across, unless there was a fucking train, because there was right by the train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when I call it a carry out, it's a shed. It's literally, you can maybe, right? Oh, yeah. It's probably 100 square feet. And the magazine selection wasn't like Penthouse and Playboy. No. It was like jugs. Jugs. <laughs> and the, real, the classy stuff. Yeah. The, the, the best of the best. It didn't even have like. Shaved and pink, I think. Yeah, was like <laughs> just fucked up shit. I'm so getting fired today. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. It was, it was. But yeah, I, I see he, uh, 
I thought you know he comes came out to a lot of our games, like especially during the uh, the playoff run, and our community support was amazing. So yeah. It is nice to see him because he he remembered us. Oh yeah. Well, he uh, helped us with the tax abatement, which was nice. Oh yeah. You know, I, so. <laughs> when I was walking off the field one time, and he's like, "Hey, good job." I'm like, "Don't raise my fucking taxes." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll fill the potholes yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, there was a guy. Just dodge him. Who uh, he was sick and tired of the potholes in his community not being filled, so he took a can of spray paint and drew dicks. <laughs> over him. Oh my god. <laughs> Giant that's dicks, and they had like they had <laughs> they had to fix them. Hey, it's a and the guy an offered end. the guy offered to film himself. He's like, I'm tired of this bullshit. I'll do it myself. And of course, God forbid anyone do anything, you know, without the aid of the government. Yes, shoving there. Oh, why? Well, Rhodes basically comes over to my house and listens to 24 hours of me bitching about the federal government. It's part of why we get along so oh. well. But then he leaves, I, and then you feel better about yeah. it for the next. Then yeah, I make him all worried. It's like, yeah. Jesus, where are my tax bills? Yeah. <laughs> I think about the same stuff. I just don't voice it. Cause is, I your, with- is your school tax funded? <laughs> yeah, it is. Fucker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Kentucky, though. They're, they're screwing us. It's a ah, it's, it's, What are your – you have easy gun laws, too, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. Any law <clears throat> is a violation of the Second Amendment. Yes. So when, when, I was going <laughs> through my, when I was going through my notes to put this – Together, notes. which were very Dave, extensive. Have, yeah, you can't see, but Dave has no notes. I have yeah. no notes. Bullshit. I have no He's notes. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> looking at his. It's, it's at the inside re- of his fleshlight. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> yeah, we got a ton oh, of questions. Oh, okay. I oh, but it's, wait, you know, I, it's on the inside of my thighs. Like, yeah. it's like high school again, yeah. trying to cheat. Yeah. It's like I was trying to, you know, tap stuff out to get the questions yeah. for the Instagram thing, and I'm reading, you know, your bio on our site, and I'm like, this sucks. We need to fix this. <laughs> Is it so, that bad still? Well, it's just it's, we need to update it. Okay. And, but then I found the one that's, you know, I probably from, need to do from that your work. Guy. You know, we'll, uh, oh, we'll figure on, it out. On, your, on the uh, Moorhead. On the Moorhead yeah, one. Yeah, I and I, didn't, I completely forgot because we've known each other for so long. This yeah. is what happens when you get old. You forget shit because you're old. But then you forget shit because you just don't see people enough. Yep. I, I forgot that you CTE. were. Yeah. I, I forgot <laughs> that you. I knew you played ball with Jim, but I didn't know you both were walk ons. Yes. Yeah. And we had yeah. a question about that. Ah. So why don't you guys talk about that a little bit? Huh? Was he like your buddy when like all when you're being hazed and crying? No. Was he like wiping your tears and saying, Jim, it will be okay? Not, not as far as you well, know. Well, <laughs> I was on the team before Road, so yeah. okay. I, I sat on his face and rubbed my taint on him as part okay. of the hazing. I had already been – there was no hazing, was there? I don't remember. No, I don't think they cared enough about us. No. Truly. No. I don't think they cared enough about us. And I don't even know if that was a thing. They never on, did anything. To, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They did just put us in that locker room in the boiler room. Yeah, with we, uh, we, you know Val the custodian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah we but, had a separate locker room. Yeah, and it was literally a fucking boiler room. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you you learn real quick where you we are in society. Yeah, Dave. I mean really, Jim yeah. Jim spoke a lot about mm-hmm. his experience being a walk on. Yeah. Was yours the same? Would you say it was the same? Yeah, it was very similar. You know, same. You you get there. You know, <clears throat> you're gonna go to practice. You're gonna get pounded on. You know, and then you walk down the the ramp. If you don't fall with your cleats on the concrete, remember that oh, stuff yeah, from Mikhail? Yeah. And then all the, the scholarship guys walk into the locker room, and you're like, oh, I got to walk past academics. I got to walk past the training it's room. It's the no-laid zone. Yeah. And, you know, I got all my pads on. I got my helmet in my hand. And I'm like, oh, I got to go into this locker room. They don't, they didn't, I don't think they gave me the code to the, to the actual no. locker room. No. You had to, like, pound on the door to throw your loop in, you know, your, your laundry loop. Yeah, it was yeah. like, but better be on fucking time for practice. You know, better do this, better do that. And I totally understand yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. it's, it's you. they don't care. Mm-hmm. And that's just, I think that's just the way it is. And you do it because Here, here's the, I want to play football. Here's the thing that, it, to, to put this in perspective, is after the recruiting process happens, so let's say, Dave, I'm, I go over to your house, you know, I'm recruiting you. I tell your parents, you know, we're going to take care of you. And as soon as you're on the team and you're there, they don't give a shit about you anyway. They're on to the next recruiting class yeah, trying to next, replace you. Yeah. So we may have been treated like shit, but so was most other people. Yeah. In, in, unless you were like, you know, had uh, proven yourself or maybe you're right. a special case or something. So I'm not – I the thing is, is I don't uh, – I wrote about this. I don't <clears> – <throat> like have any ill will because I was treated exactly uh, how I, what I brought to the table, which was fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I learned a valuable lesson. Like that's just the way it goes. You Mm -hmm. know, I didn't earn any respect and 
uh, I was <clears throat> my first part of at Arizona was spring ball because I had I had uh, entered the winter semester yep. and so a spring ball so it was kind of nice because it, it wasn't terribly chaotic and the first time I carried the ball was during a f- uh, full line you know like goal line and uh, first of all like the speed was fucking crazy ridiculous. anyway to make a long story short I got in a fight I fought no matter what, where I was I always tried to fight it was like prison like I'm gonna fight I got the shit kicked out of me Dave I mean the guy held like like, they must have been practicing this shit. <laughs> the guy was holding me. Salavea was holding yeah. one of my arms, and the other dudes were just fucking railing on me. And I you know, still fought, and I was kicking. And after that pra- practice, I was walking off. You know, this, I don't know, hour and a half. Jimmy Sprott comes up to me. He's like, you're going out and drinking with us tonight. Yeah. So I'm like, really? He's you're like, in. hey, you fucking did it, man. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Of course, I was fucking bruised and bad, <laughs> shamed. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it has to be. Yep. And uh, since you both are now or over the past several years you've been coaching players longer than he has right yeah, yeah. just yep. Yep. it's pretty close though it was yeah, a yeah, few yeah. years yeah. do you look back differently now on the walk-on experience now that you're actually coaching players compared to before you were coaching players and we're just you know Studying strength and lifting and so forth. In other words, I, I, has any perspective changed? Yeah, here's the thing is it didn't change uh, at that time because so much time had gone by. Yeah. Uh, it's like maybe when you were at Westside, you know, after you left, you're kind of like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after a while. But then enough time had – now, if I had uh, just started coaching – I guess I did. When I was at Kentucky, I did. Um, that peppered me much more than it does today. Yeah. I'm also in a different situation. I'm with high school kids, and I don't right. recruit anyone. Yeah. So whoever the kids, whoever I got, I have to make them better. Yeah, but so, the first year you were on the field, though, is it, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about. As, as a coach? As a coach. The first, well, my first real coaching experience was at Kentucky. That was the closest okay. I had, and uh, definitely. Yeah. And you still, you know, <clears throat> whether it's right or not, I still have uh, – a huge chip on my shoulder. I don't think anyone thinks I'm worth anything. And I'm not in a negative, like, me. I'm, like, depressed. Yeah. I still feel yeah. like I have to fucking do shit all the yeah. time. Prove something. Prove something. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, even when I was in high school, I felt like that because, I don't know. But I think that's what drives you, man. I, this whole thing about, like, you know, we want the kids in our high school to feel like they're accepted. Yeah. But you have to be – we don't – how do I put this – our culture is, and Rhodes was, has seen it a little bit. You're going to yeah. see it tomorrow. Our culture, Dave, I'm telling you, is nothing I've ever seen before. And we have a level of expectation. And it's all about, <clears throat> besides like being on time, it's always doing the little shit right, taking things seriously. Yep. Um, effort, effort, effort. We had, <clears throat> you, know, you can imagine that not all these kids are very good athletes, especially mm-hmm. the younger kids. And out here. Yeah. And some of them are been fantastic. However... Uh, as long as you give the effort, I'm 100% behind you. As soon as you start dicking around, like, it's just, we, there's too many kids and not enough me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, and, so, but when I was at Kentucky, it still flavored, you know, pep, like, flavored me. I don't know how that sounds very mm. fucking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still <laughs> felt, uh, like I, I understood the walk-ons better. And what pissed me off though was some of the, coaches strength and otherwise uh even with the recruits that didn't play very much or didn't show promise they just treat them yeah. treat them like shit i'm like dude they're gonna yep. play yep. like they're one injury maybe one or two injuries away from or a year playing. or two of why are you ignoring away? these guys yeah. yeah and that always pissed me off because if the kid's willing to give effort i'm willing to give them mm-hmm. and i've seen way too many kids who maybe didn't show promise you know their first year and all of a sudden three years later you know, they're 220 fucking pounds. They're deadlifting 405 for six. And you're like, my God, this yep. kid can. And, what, and we see it. I'm not going to name names. We see it with other sports who don't treat, don't, they don't want to develop their athletes. And they get treated like shit. And they come to football. And, like, you're willing to give what you got, man. You will, you will make some kind of impact here. And, and to a T, these players will come over and be like, I love this sport because everyone here fucking means something. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not 
rushing yeah. for 2,000 yards. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so at the I same think, time, at the high school, you'll have some kids that really haven't matured yet. No, and it takes them two or three years. Yeah, and then sudden, they sprout. It's like, yeah. holy fuck, I didn't yeah. know this kid was going to be 6'5", 280. Not just physically, but <laughs> mentally. Yes, yes. And what I can't... Ex- I'm talking. I'm, I apologize. Uh, yeah, I have to remember <laughs> that they're that they're 15 years old, 16 years old, and I can't expect them to have the same ideas and worldview and everything else. And I don't want them to because, like, I'm fucking jaded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I hate everything. Don't be dark like I am. But uh, <clears throat> you can't expect them to do the right things. And you, Dave, you know this, and Matt, you know this. Kids want to be told have expect high expectations and yeah. achieve them. And as yep. soon as you you know, water that shit down. Dude, it does no one any good. Yeah. And, and you know, how long did you, <clears throat> like, when you started powerlifting, Dave, no one really benched 600, right? It was no. kind of a mythical number. No. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think in East, <clears throat> and of course the bench shirts and all that shit mm-hmm. came into play. But it's like the four-minute mile. Yeah. Once, uh, was it ban- Roger Bannister? Yeah. Once, once he did it, it, everyone's like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> it was like 25 it. people did it, you know, in the next year. And I, I have a soft spot for the kids that uh <clears throat> that give extra effort that maybe no one else wants because man and this sounds maybe egotistical or something but those kids would be fucking loyal yeah because yeah. you gave them your time and that's you know mm-hmm. so I now love- do you find the same thing when they get to your level because you're one level up yeah i <clears throat> i deal with non-scholarship football players so in a way they're preferred walk-ons yes um they're all walk-ons, and we still get walk-ons that weren't recruited and all that. You deal with all sports, though, still, though, I right? do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, it, it, it's it's this, uh, the same Is every sport non-scholarship? Or just no, just football. Oh, okay. Yeah, just football. Right. We're yeah, kind yeah, of a, yeah. mid, a mid-major yeah, yeah, yeah. basketball, all that other stuff. Um, but I, it's the same thing. It's, it's if, if you give great effort. I don't want to coach effort and enthusiasm. Oh. If I have to be a hype coach, I call them strength cheerleaders. <laughs> Just pick any FBS school you watch on Saturday who's in their strength cheerleaders, not coaches. In my opinion, I'm yes. probably going to get crucified for that. No, but I, I would just, agree with that. It's, it's, I don't, I'm not going to, if I have to fire you up to come in and get a lift in or get a run in, that's a problem because nobody ever had to do that for me. They, they know, I'm a little bit like Jim. I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. I never thought I was good enough. I, all that stuff. And, and I think it still drives me today to try to be better at what I do. So if I get a kid that, that doesn't have that, I have a hard time with them. You don't give up on them. Yeah. But it's just, it's, 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 you show me great effort. You show me great enthusiasm. I don't care if you squat 100 pounds or 400 pounds. That squat goes to 120. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I couldn't be happier because you're showing some sort of yeah. aptitude to what we're doing and you're showing improvement. And I know what's going to show in your play. I know that <clears throat> four years from now, going through all this stuff, it's going to help you in life. The, the little battles that you can learn about in the yeah. weight room, on this field, whatever it is. So you just keep plugging along. And I, you know how many kids I've been like, I'm fucking done with this kid. I can't. Blah, blah. His parents failed. Blah, blah. Her parents failed. And I rant and rave in my office, and I'm like, oh, I'm such a douche. I'm not going to give up on these kids. Yeah. Because people didn't give up on me. Yeah, yeah. You know, the few, you know and it's just like, I don't think you're in this business if you're going to just give up on someone because they, yeah, because I mean they don't get it yet because they're only 18 to 22 years old. Jim's dealing with like 14 to 18 year olds. They're only 18 to 22. So yeah, we got seventh graders now. They're not even. Yeah, you know they're not. They're adults by law. But you know I was talking to a baseball player the other day. He goes, "We're 22. We're not even fucking adults yet." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, Don. You know I don't want to say his name. I yeah. almost said it. His but name's I'm, Don, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> close." <laughs> Close. Don Mattingly. Yes, yes. Good friend of mine. Um, but I'm like, oh, like this kid gets it. He understands. Yeah. I'm kind of getting off topic here. but Not really, but it, I it, think the one thing that really is off topic, but you both have talked about having chips on your shoulders, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's an asset, especially for the younger you know, athletes and so forth. And that, that's what you kind of look for. You actually try to find a way to put that chip on their shoulder. I think where it becomes detrimental. When it starts weighing you down. Is when they get older and they mature. Like, see, you both have realized you have a chip on your shoulder. Mm. There's a big difference between having a chip on your shoulder and knowing you have a chip on your shoulder. Very big. Big difference. I I call it, it's my, I'm an uh, egomaniac with an uh, (laughs) inferiority complex. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm good. I 
I think. I but might. I might not be, so I, I better freaking read this or study yeah, that or whatever. Yeah, it gives you There's, pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, where yeah. when you're younger, you don't have that pause, so you're just a crazy fuck that will go do. And then yeah. some people you know, never grow out of that. And yeah, and they're the ones that end up really never going anywhere. Yeah. Well, I deserve. It, it, it becomes it, a self fulfilling prophecy. Yes. And I'll never forget uh, when I was first started coaching at Kentucky. There was a couple job openings, and I applied for them. I never got them, but uh, I got – Worked hand- out for you, brother. Oh, I don't fucking care. <laughs> so glad. So glad I didn't get any of those jobs. Uh, I wouldn't have met you. Yeah. You know? I mean, Jesus, dude, you, I'm in, you have a person in, from Chicago area and a girl in New Jersey live in London because of you. Think about that. I don't know it's, if that's a good thing, man. No, it's dude. I have a fucking Ohio. life that I, if, if, I always tell people this. When I was, uh, my first apartment, I wrote down exactly what I wanted to do. Like, I wrote it down. And it wasn't, like, super specific. Because technically, like, my job didn't exist. Your job didn't really exist. No, no. But I knew kind of what I wanted. And I wrote that down. And I wrote down a couple things. <clears throat> and uh, if, I couldn't imagine a better life. Like, I couldn't have written it. You know, and like, mm-hmm. it, it, I don't know if that makes sense, but I could never imagine. I'm like, God, I got every advantage in the world. And we're not rich. We're not this. We don't have, you know, I don't, we're not going yeah, on this. You fancy- should see his lawn. It's a shithole. No. He's not rich. Mine's bad Dude, right now. No. <laughs> I got dandelions that are this fucking our, high. Our lawn is so fucking good. It's beautiful. Right. It's because, beautiful. Because Juliet does it all. Oh, oh mine's no, fucking terrible. Really? Dude. I don't see. You, you didn't. You, you don't get off the couch? No. And, and and do that. That's the, that's why I'm still married. Is because my wife knows who I am. Yes, yes. I've never remembered yeah. her birthday. Oh really? It's nope. every year. No, I forget so my anniversary year? every year. We Tracy we both of us well. have never remembered. It's always been yeah. like two weeks later, yeah. and we're like, wasn't it in some time? Like, Meh. now when I bought this, did, did it have a chip on its shoulder? It's a Pringle, you know, dude. It's, <laughs> it's just, a bugle. I'm just, I'm just wondering fucking, when I when I buy when I buy the Wender yeah, the Wendler apparel does it does it have chips? It might be in the box. You have to. Or, uh, uh, I used to have traps, but now what? What you call <laughs> traps? It turned into trips. 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 Now I got trips. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, oh boy, what am I doing? Here? Technical difficulties. Yep. Um, go. I got to get closer. to Was them? I too far right. away or too close? God, that was probably a twenty-year-old uh, Q and A. Traps to trips. Oh, oh that's funny. You know. Uh, and the tinkle dance, I remember that question. You know, oh, dude. <laughs> I was thinking about that <laughs> the other day oh. because I remember where I had to park to get in my apartment. And I remember, like, you had to get those keys, like that, the house key or the apartment key. And I just hope I can slide it in in one shot, you know? Never happens because you're Because I took ephedrine, and ephedrine fucks up my piss. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That was the worst drug I've ever taken in my life. Horrible. was ephedrine. You get that? Uh, you get the eye twitches. Yeah, and oh, like I can't you, figure out why I can't sleep. I squatted at eight o'clock tonight. Yeah, well, yeah. multi ply <laughs> shit too. Yeah, yeah. So you got all this gear on, and you know you have to piss. You know it, yeah. and you fucking tear it down as far as you can. And then you you pry your and you dick. hope you didn't use Equablock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pry your dick out, which isn't the easiest thing, and nothing fucking comes yeah. out. Just, oh come on, fuck. Uh, all it's, right, it's, speaking the, of. The, you, you were talking about an apartment, and it reminded me of you once. It was a dinner that we were at. Where was talking about his uh, dorm. Ah, oh, his no, apartment. His no. apartment no, his in dorm. Arizona. In Arizona. Oh yes. Yeah. So let's hear about that. That's it was we dark. Gotta bring up some shit that readers don't know about. It was dark. I, the, my favorite memory was. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a lot of favorite about. memories, but Jim had scored a touchdown. Uh, on, on my very Thursday first night, carry yeah, ever, ever on, on national TV on Thursday national night, fucking TV against San Diego State. The refs like, dude, you're gonna get a penalty. I was yeah. celebrating. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, this is genuine shit. Don't take this from anybody. Yeah. And then I fucking punched him. No. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister calls me. We're throwing a party for Jim. My sister threw parties mm-hmm. for the whole team. So uh, Friday or Saturday, whenever it was, I go over it was to Friday. It was Friday. I go over to Jim's house. Doors open. He's in there. I forget who was in there. Probably Schwartz and Manly and whatever. They're playing video games. Doors wide open. I walk in. Jim's got a a stadium cup, and I know it was Jim Beam. There was probably no ice in it. He was too, he was too poor to afford ice at that time. Um, he had a cigarette and a dip in the size of my head, and he looks at me. He spits the dip, smokes a cigarette, and takes a swig and goes, 
I scored a fucking touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was still out at this point, so it, it was a it was a good night. Like, yeah, we had a oh, good yeah. night. And then we're at the we're at the uh, Maloney's that night. That was our our little bar. And you is know, that still around? It is actually. Oh, I saw it right. when I was out there a couple months ago. Right. And uh, I, you know, I was I was happy. I'm like, you gotta sleep with this guy. He scored a touchdown. He's gonna play in the NFL. Hey, he is Jim Weller. He is guy, you know. And I'm like, oh my god. And I remember all this, so I couldn't have been that bad. Probably had some ephedrine mixed in there too. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, oh man, that was uh, a good night. I was one was of my favorite. Uh, <laughs> and the the one thing I always promised myself I would do is once once they came back from the commercial break, the cameras on me, you know. This is great. And uh, I was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to say something stupid. So I was like, hi, my mom and dad were there. But I'm like, I got to say hi, mom and dad. But my mom, we were in San Diego. We were at Qualcomm Stadium. Qualcomm I think. Stadium, yep. So I thanked them and I thanked my girlfriend, Heather, who had been with me forever. And then I thanked my dog, Betty. I'm like, Betty, I love you, man. Thanks for everything. <laughs> and it was only funny to like me and like four people, but I was I'm fucking rolling. I'm like, this is, yeah. it's like the dumbest fucking yeah. joke. It's great, though. And uh, all my, <clears throat> even when I went, Back to the weight room on the, well, it was a Thursday night game. Yeah. I, I went back and trained Friday, and the whole strength staff was standing up cheering. It was like a real awesome moment for me. And then, of course, like, you thank your fucking dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. So uh, uh, that's one of my, you know, you, you can't get any better than that. Your first carry goes for a touchdown. Yeah. And, you know, it was, a, it was in the second quarter, I think, so it wasn't just like but slot minutes. And I, rem- I remember that On practice. ESPN. Yeah. On a Thursday back then, that was a big deal. Now yeah. there's like 37 games on. Thursday yeah, this nights. was the only game on. Yeah, back then, back in the 90s. Um, <laughs> but I remember I was in, in, in Jim's article, The Walk On. I was yeah. part of that. Uh, I was the tight end uh, on all those balanced, right, give it to Wendler and let him get his ass kicked mm-hmm. series where he carried the ball like, I mean, oh, 25 uh, during, times during the scout practice. Ball. Yeah. yeah. Like I was, I was playing tight end. That, that's that's and, how I got on the traveling yeah. team was they would – uh, every Thursday, the guys that didn't play, they would have like a little mini scrimmage, and uh, they call it the Scout Bowl because the Scout team players. Yeah, and I uh, used to wear special socks for that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, for your varicose veins. Yes. <laughs> Shut up, Jim. Nobody needs to know about or his, that. Cl- his club foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just tape that up. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so basically, anyone who wasn't traveling got had to play in the game, and so like you know, everyone knew it was going to happen. Well. Every running back that we had, uh, you know, all the scholarship guys all fucking left. And they're like, I, want to, I don't want to scrimmage, you know. And, uh, of course, they can't really do anything because no one cares. Yeah. And Babers looked at me, the, yeah. <clears throat> who's now the head coach at uh, Syracuse. He's like, Wendler, you're in, buddy. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And just it's hard to understand, but you can't really run your typical offense because none of the kids really ran the offense. They were always running scalpels. So they didn't really know. Yeah. And so they just, it's really run heavy you just because everyone kind of – Inside and outside zone. Yeah, and I ran <laughs> every fucking play. play. I cut my head open, so I yeah. looked like I was like a black metal musician just covered in blood. And Babers gave me a hug, and uh, he's like, Jimmy, wow. You mm-hmm. know, I ran my ass off. And then uh, <clears throat> I, I think it was uh, that next Monday or Sunday or something, I, you know, we came in for after the game, yep. which we didn't go to. Yeah. And Babers <laughs> took me aside and said, Tommy says, uh, told me that no matter what, you will always travel. He was, you earned a spot here. And that was, you know, that was a huge fucking deal for me. Mm-hmm. And my first game was against Stanford, and I'll never forget, Dave. I mean, there's fucking, you know, 60,000 yeah, people. Yeah. And you think they're looking at you because you... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. No, they're all fucking, you know, smoking weed yeah. and yeah. <laughs> fucking finger, finger banging someone. <laughs> but you're like, I'm all nervous. And it was kickoff return, so they kicked the ball off. I get my block, and the dude must have been... It was like blocking your fucking... Your, 12 year old kid who's in the you know who doesn't know anything i was yeah. like fucking throwing him around i'm like my god i'm going the nfl motherfucker <laughs> oh yeah if this is <laughs> if this is if what it is all i'm gonna fucking kick yeah. ass yeah, yeah it doesn't work like that yeah no, no, that's no, when no. back when stanford was a bunch of pussies now they're now they're yeah now they're, 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 they're the you know they're sledgehammers in the pack it's 12 pack 12 yeah it's yeah. funny that stanford is now now the they're tough considered, guy yeah. we we were kind of tough guys it was arizona, it was, it was arizona and washington a, yeah that was the big ones. And uh, they were cupcakes. Oh, Dave. And you would it's, laugh your it's ass off. It's different. Yeah. yeah. It's very different now. Very so, different now. But The whole landscape of college football has changed greatly. Yes. Know? So I, this is really sad. Matt comes over all the time. 
and we just watched old fucking yeah. Nebraska from, games from, from like played. 94 and 95. That's <laughs> those right. were the fucking days. Yeah. Yeah. We were wine stuff. So much yeah. tougher than those kids. <laughs> yeah, they're all <laughs> fucking kids today we're, are all pussies. We're yeah. totally, we're, I'm totally yeah. that guy. Yeah. I yeah. am that guy. They're yeah. so much tougher than they were. That's yeah. Weird. Yeah. But if we you, played football practice uphill, downhill both ways. The thing is, is yeah. uh, my wife was never really a football fan. And uh, so I think maybe the first two years we were together, I put on, it was on uh, ESPN Classic. They had yeah. an old Nebraska football game on. <clears throat> and she looks at me and she's like, who's playing? I'm like, oh, it's Nebraska. She's like, my God, they look awesome. Oh. Like, they're, no one's fat. Everyone's fucking jacked. I'm like, well, this was 1995. She's like, are you kidding me? And she couldn't like get over the fact mm-hmm. that everyone was muscular, <laughs> yeah, and not fat. She's like, "What? What? How can yeah. things regress?" Oh. And so my kind of answer yeah. is, and people will say, "Well, you have all these freaks, right, Dave?" The problem is, the freaks will always be the freaks, and evolution yeah. will always and- bump that fucking higher. The the difference is, and this is where strength and conditioning come in. I've said this a million times. The average dude's got worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. So my like, <clears throat> I always tell people. My job, and I told this to a, the strength coach at a rival school, I, he was asking me what we did. I said, my job is to make my average guy kick the shit out of your average guy. Mm-hmm. Because you know how they, like That's the <laughs> truth, though, yeah. because your you're, you're, you're great are going to be, be great. great no matter what and you you're, do. And your shitty, yeah. you know, they're, they're going to be shitty. Yeah, so we're just going to make our average guy a little bit better. Because generally speaking, you know, in uh, high school and, and most colleges, unless you're like Alabama or Ohio State, yeah. mostly average dudes. Yep. And that's where you can make the impact. Yep. And, you know, <clears throat> as a team, we don't really have a super strong kid. Yeah. Like, we always, like, last year we had Bricker and we, whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, we're doing some shit. You're like, well, oh, yeah. this year we don't really have that except collectively. They're, it's insane. Yeah. Most, of our, most of our guys who, I'd say probably all of our starters can deadlift 400 pounds. Have you ever, I'm going back to Juliet here because she kids. said she never really understood football. Have you ever showed her game film? On know, me? Just regular game film so she can see a play unfold. Because I think a lot of people who don't yeah. know football what? watch it on TV and they really. So you, you never you, watched you, football, you you never watch football, football with, with me. Yeah. Well, I, you I, know I, what I'm did saying you see though? What the guard did? I mean, they, they can't, you, they don't yeah. see, if they can actually see a play yeah. unfold. When I, and see what's going on. When yeah. we watch it's football some games, crazy I rewind shit. each play. Okay. And I start explaining stuff to her. Like, watch this okay. guard pull, and you're going to see this safety creep up. So she's, okay. So she's, she's got like, it. oh. And that, she's still like, <clears throat> you know, when you get good at something, you just, uh, you, everything slows down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So when I'm watching a play, now everything just, you know, I'm like, oh, that's what happened. But she's like, it's just fucking chaos. Yeah. <laughs> see, I, I'm the guy that if I'm watching a game, I want to be sitting up high. Yeah, because you can you know, see shit down. It's like Louie yeah. would get these things like, yeah, we're going to be on the some. sideline for the Browns. I'm <laughs> you like, can't see anything. <laughs> all I knew is, holy fuck, this shit is fast. <laughs> and right? Pretty I mean, if, you it, cannot, it, unless oh you're on God. the field, you'd have no idea. I'm oh. saying the stands doesn't do it justice. Oh, no. When God. we went to the Browns, and I think, were you there with me when we had Rogerio? No. Or Big Mike? No. When Mike, Mike almost got killed or something <laughs> on the sideline or something? I don't know. I'm when just... he was sweating so bad. <laughs> In like 30 degree oh, weather. Jesus Christ. It was, oh yeah, it was God. snowing. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice lake, uh, lake breeze. Oh, but oh, anyhow, yeah. there was a few times we went up there, but the speed, man. Yeah. It, you, it's like, holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. I have, you know who I have the greatest respect for? The cameraman. Yeah. Them motherfuckers are quick. They, their reaction time <laughs> is like Bruce fucking Lee. <laughs> Because yeah. you're, I, I mean, you're watching what's going on, yeah. and then unreal. the next thing you know, you're like, "Well, Jesus yep. Christ, I almost got my head knocked it's off." Unreal, yeah. That the, it's, and I struggle a little bit with this because every kid that goes to college wants to play in the NFL, and mm-hmm. they all think they're going to play in the NFL. And uh, I'm, I don't know what Josh was just doing to me, but he's telling me to get closer to my mic. Looks like you do know. Yeah, yeah. It was super awkward. I usually have to pay for stuff like that. Is that, that. when he pulls down his pants and it, that's what was happening? Yanks yeah. on his testicles. Yeah, that, that means get closer. That's what was happening. <laughs> Um, How'd you know? <laughs> what, what was I talking about? The speed. Oh, yeah. just how fa- it's it's unbelievable because because oh, I'm gonna go play in the league and, and I'll never say no, but it's like guys, uh, you don't know how fast they are, how big they are. It, it's 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 like I just remember watching Chris McAllister run his forty on pro day. He was and, a top ten pick that played at Arizona. Yeah, he in the was first a, round. Yeah, he's six one, two hundred and five corner. Ran a four three three forty on grass, and I was standing behind the Oakland or L.A. Raiders, I guess at the time, scout, and he mumbled to himself, "Holy shit, that was fast!" 
And I go, what'd he run? And he just showed me the clock. And when you, like, I watched Chris run. And it was like, oh, wow. Like, this is crazy. I mean, it's amazing it, it, it's, shit. It's, it's, it's unreal. I'm a 4'4". Four, four. No, you're not. You're a 4'7", dude. Well, then, then, you're a 4'7", I mean, maybe with wind behind you. Like, you don't know how fast that is. Well, when you see them cut, you oh, know, run, stop, cut. Yeah. Now, is because you're both working with young athletes, we know we can make them stronger. Yeah. Can you make that better? Or is that I genetic? Dave, Dave, Dave. I know. I, what do you think getting putting on muscle mass and making them stronger helps them do? Yeah. It helps you, that too. Yeah. You you yeah. can you can you can improve that, but those freaks It's a lot of motor skill it. though. Yeah, I mean yeah. you can, but here <clears throat> it, it, Yes, but it's there, there is uh, I guess what I'm asking is have you seen it I in, haven't your, seen in it. your players? Not where no. Okay. I've never well, seen your players a player. are your players are four years older than yeah, his. Yeah, I've never I've, I've never seen a kid. I've seen some cool things. Yeah, for like I'm like wow that kid did that. That's awesome. Well, you're asking I, no if one's it, ever it, wowed if me. it's trainable. Yes, yeah, it's trainable. Yeah. But I yeah. think to a point, there, there's a difference between <clears throat> that kid knowing uh, what to do in a certain situation. You yes. can drill that. Um, I see it. You see it especially with middle linebackers, especially back in the day. The guys were, you know, not very fast, but somehow they always make always, it to the yeah. ball. Well, that's visual acuity. Yeah, and there's, you know? and then they they understand what's going on, and so just that may improve what you would yeah. consider. Yeah, what you're already good at. Yeah, and uh, I think that is. But the problem is, is when you have a guy like Chris McAllister or some, you know, some other people we know, they will do that really well, and then they go punt. <laughs> like fucking around, and then they punt the ball ninety yards. You're like Jesus, what can't you yeah. do? And then yeah, 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 and then yeah. they then they you know do a three sixty dunk. Yeah, and uh, you know, and you're like, so it's the guys that do that right off the bat seem to do everything well. But yeah. I still think it's trainable. It's yeah, just, it, you're, you're gonna be good at that one kind. Well, of I, I still think even if you have that you know high end genetic freak, which is pretty much all pro sports. Yes, mm-hmm. every one of them can be beaten by yes. a very high end average yeah, guy absolutely because nobody has zero weak points no they just the average the really good average guy has to figure out where their opponent is weak is we- it's like the yeah. old fucking nintendo video yeah. games bo jackson you know you gotta hit yeah you gotta hit him in the stomach twice and <laughs> pop him in the nose <laughs> yeah. about goes the, down. Uh, mike tyson yeah. mike tyson you know it's just like you gotta figure Body it blow. out Body <laughs> blow. yeah yeah well it's it's uh <clears throat> what was i gonna say about that uh Damn it! I don't remember. Never mind. The the point being is though, even those, uh, you have a guy like uh, who's that, the receiver for the Patriots, the little dude. Oh uh, Edelman. yeah, yeah, yeah. Edelman. 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 Uh, I mean, Edelman's very fast. He's an yeah. incredible athlete. And the guy played quarterback right at yeah. Kent. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So the dude's a phenomenal athlete. He's probably not running a terribly fast forty. Uh, and we kind of all agree 40 is pointless anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he knows he runs those routes so well that it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. go ahead, you can be faster than me. You're not going to get here. My yeah. route's going to be so, you know. Crisp, and, you know, if he's supposed yeah. to cut on his third step at three and a half Dude, yards. Dude, watch Jason gets, Witten play. Oh. He gets out of his stance. He's a, he's a tight end for the Cowboys. He just came out of retirement. He just lumbers down the field, and then it doesn't look like he's doing anything, and he's always open. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's, got, he's got the – most catches out of any cowboy ever. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I'm like, like, yeah. Don't you Michael want to Urban, cover? <laughs> yeah. But he's, you know, he's 6'5", 265 pounds. Yeah, he he's not can... fast. You watch him run and you're like, what? But he's pulling away. Uh, he's wide open because he understands the intricacies of if I got to run an option route, th- this is what I got to do. Yeah, if I run ash, a corner yeah. and if I'm running a seam route, this is where I have to be and here I have to bend. And if the safety does this, I – I, this is my read. If yeah. the safety does that, you know, I come inside or, you know, whatever it is. And it's putting all that together and then he's wide open and he's, you and know, that, And the thing is, is he puts it all it's, together, Dave, and he doesn't think about it. No, it just yeah. happens. That's when it starts getting. See, I think yeah. that um, it's like Tom well, Brady is the perfect example yeah. of that. I've always said that skill is a great equalizer, you know, <laughs> because you, you can work your skills. You know, it's, I can take this back to the, the moment that I call the call. Where Jim went down, you know, the multiply gear is the best example of skill development, I've, out of anything I've ever seen. Think about it, right? <laughs> so Jim's actually I'm out benching him at the time by like yeah a pound, and not not much. It, like it was five it pounds. St- no, it was a it was not yeah. much, but five pounds, right? He goes down and fucking works <laughs> with Mike, Mike Miller and Bill Crawford and Bill Crawford, yeah. and then I get the call, and Jim calls. And he's like, dude, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I'm like, what? I just benched 660 for 
either a double or a triple. I think it was a double. For a double. I'm like, you're fucking lying to me. There's no. There's and I no, didn't get any stronger. There's, yeah. I'm like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. You, you, he had like a 600 bench at the time. I'm like, no, you don't I, had put, a, I had a 565 bench. 565 yeah. bench. I'm like, you can't yeah. put 100 pounds on your bench in a fucking day. And then do a triple or a double. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, more yeah. than fucking yeah. one. I know that because <laughs> after it, I heard that. It was a borrowed bench shirt, too. Yeah. <laughs> after I heard that, the whole room went dark. <laughs> you know, I was like, what the like, fuck? He, he had like vertigo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, no, man, this shit's for real. Yep. And I'm like, are you, put somebody else on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And poor Bob, nothing ever happened to Bob. <laughs> yeah. And then he put like fucking. Bob never benched. <laughs> I think he put like Mike Miller on the phone. He's like, yeah, you know, like, give me somebody that, I don't want the guy that taught him. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me some fucking bystander. Yeah. You know, so after like three people, yeah, I'm like, John holy Bott fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, unreal, yeah. and, and I would say I would agree with that. I've I've always described gear lifting versus raw or whatever yeah. it's called. It's a skill. Well, he came back and he's like oh. he's showing me what, and so it, Dude, I he, started doing pseudo benches like a thousand a day. Yeah, you know, because uh, you know, yeah. flaring the what, elbows. What do we call it? Pseudo bench. Is that what we call it? The pseudo bench. Fan, phantom bench. Phantom, phantom bench. bench. Phantom bench. Yes. Yeah. And I figured I had to do <laughs> fucking ten thousand because that was the rule, right? Ten thousand hours. 10, so 000. I had to do a thousand a fucking day. <laughs> and you know, I told Louie, "Look, I'm training my bench out here," and obviously that created its own little wrinkles in <laughs> oh, itself. Boy. But oh boy. And um, yeah, that led to the fucking meet that and it was the last meet I ever did actually, yeah. where I tested my raw bench. Kind of for raw, you know, for yeah, me, yeah. it was a one board or, or whatever the smallest <laughs> board we had one was. One board reverse band with a yeah, bench. Yeah, uh, that, that's now. The one board is actually it, a four by four. We had, <laughs> it was like a three quarter board. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't really a one board, but I did like 520 or something like that. And then I went to the meet and the, the, I can't touch. I open with something I can't touch with, which I know, which is, I don't know, 650. It's a fucking joke. I go to 700. I'm a little ways from touching. Bloated like a motherfucker, too. Yeah. Like PR bloat. So I had that going on. <laughs> and um, he had the, a, the bloated he, pig. He, he, I remember that yeah. uh, you sent me. So the 700 just flies up, and Jim's like, holy shit. You know, all you need to do is to, you know, bring more, push your, yeah. you know, push your heels down, get yeah. more air in. This is, this is a given. So on the third one, I take it down. It actually touches. I bring it up, lock out the left arm. My right arm goes underneath the J cup, mm. and I press the J cup out of the rack, <laughs> right? And, of course, it's red-lighted, but yeah. I'm mad as fuck, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Louie's sitting right there in front of me. He says, I told work. you that shit doesn't work. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker. 100 mother fucking fucker. pounds. Yeah. So I went back that next Wednesday. It was the max effort yeah. day and yeah. tested my bench again, raw bench again, yeah. and barely – did 425 off that same fucking board <laughs> so i lost 100 pounds on my raw bench and yeah. unofficially yeah, picked yeah. up 100 but that's when i realized holy shit you know you need to learn this shit or you're gonna get your ass kicked yeah because with that because i trained with uh yeah vincent dizenzo yeah. and yeah. that's what vincent taught me because vincent learned from bill and those guys yeah and it was if 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 something went wrong uh, generally for me with long arms, it was coming towards my face. Mm -hmm. If I didn't get my elbows under the bar fast, it was, you know. I forgot all about the phantom bench. Yeah. I remember yeah. I'd, I'd be in my office and doing this. What do you, okay, Dave, okay, okay, I'll do oh, it too. Yeah. I'll yeah, do it too. A couple reps in, yeah. Thanks for the it's recommendation. Like, yeah. It's like, holy fuck, you know. I can and, still do it, man. Yeah, and we, yeah. I, I can still do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, just, it's just like it's like a dance. It's like riding a bike. What are you doing? It's like, when I go to the clubs, that's one of mine. Yeah. That and I do the snatch. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to I want to get into when you were training with Vincent, but before yeah. that, you you was it arena ball? <laughs> yeah. What what was that little? That was me time frame. Just wanting to play football, and so when I finished playing, I was coaching football at the University of Richmond. Uh, one of my dad's good friends he played with in college gave me a job at Richmond, Jim Reed. Uh, and I, I didn't get to leave football on my terms. Uh, I wasn't good enough to play elsewhere. Jim, what are you doing? I'm trying to get my face in there. Uh, um, <laughs> so uh, I, it, this, I got a call like out of the blue one day in my office. And the guy's like, hey, I'm a coach for the arena team and the Richmond Speed in town. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, yeah, I'll play. Cool. So I hadn't played for like two years. So mm -hmm. I was like, coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play arena ball. And he looked at me. He's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, ah. He goes, ah, ah, you're just like your fucking father. 
And so I went and did it. I mean, it was a blast. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as good as Arizona. The competition one is, wasn't as good. Um, <laughs> well, it was, it's a lot smaller, right? Yeah, it's eight-man football. You play on a hockey rink. Yeah. So it's a quarter the size of the field. You play both ways. It's like high school. Uh, so what did you big? play? Because you were a tight end. So how- I played everything. I played <laughs> O-line. Uh, Skin flute. Yeah, I played the tight end position in there, <laughs> which could go out for a pass. I'm just going to power through. Yeah, Jim's I mean, like, statement. what the hell does a tight end do? <laughs> um, and then there's the guard position. I played fullback. I played linebacker. I played all three defensive line positions. Did everyone have to go both ways or no? Yeah, okay. you did, yeah. So what you would do is you'd go offense, defense, offense, out, or defense, offense, defense. 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 And I actually was better on defense, so I played more defense. Um, and I'm like, yeah, hey, you're going to play nose. All right, cool. Never played nose in my life. I was 240 pounds playing nose against 300 pound guys. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is fun. This is a blast. And I kind of knew how to play D line a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, this is fun. And then one day, our, our starting fullback pulled his hamstring. Coach looked at me. He's like, go play fullback. Okay. <laughs> Never played fullback. Get in a huddle, call the play. I'm like, Bob, the quarterback, Bob, what do I do on this? And he looks at me, he goes, you're not a fullback. Like, I know, what do I do? Eight-man football is so easy to figure out. So he's like, well, just block here. Okay, cool. And so I figured it out. So I played, and I actually I played like 13 games that season, and I jacked my neck up. In, uh, it's really cool. My last play in football was uh, I caused a fumble. The guy that was supposed to block, I was playing D-end or whatever, the outside defensive line position. And I think he screwed up because there's no way I should have been that free. And I was coming inside, and he went out, and I hit the quarterback right in the – right in the, the ju- ju- Yeah, ju- ju- the ju- ju- <laughs> with my face ju- mask. That's from and, uh, semi, <laughs> semi- Semi-pro, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right to ju- ju- him. <laughs> and I hit him so hard, and my arm went numb. <laughs> and I hit – it was, a, it was a, one of the best stingers I ever got. <laughs> You know, and I had the, the helmet with the face mask and the cowboy collar that went halfway up the back of my neck. It didn't matter because I hit him with the crown of my yeah. head, so my that's spine how you, that's compressed. How you, that's how you're supposed to hit. Yeah, you that's know. what I keep telling the guys. I'm like, stop getting your head out of the way. Yeah, the helmet is a weapon. <laughs> that's right, tell them. <laughs> you know? So you're wearing a helmet for a fucking reason. Yes, that's why rugby's not tough. <laughs> I'm going to get hell for that. I always... <laughs> Total side note, I always say soccer's for the guys that aren't tough enough to play football. <laughs> Rugby's for the guys that aren't tough enough to play soccer. You want to ruffle some feathers, let me tell you. Ooh. But um, so I, like, I knew I was done. Like when it happened, I'm like, yeah, this is it. There's no – and then that's actually when I truly found the weight room, mm-hmm. rehabbing from that because they said they wanted to fuse my neck because I was having all kinds of nerve issues in my fingers and they were numb and uh, I had trouble like squeezing my hand. And, like, if you can't Mm -hmm. get this back, and it was, like, three or four months, we got to fuse your neck. I think I was 25. I'm like, oh, no, we're not doing that. Jim Reed at Richmond (laughs) gave me my job back. (laughs) So I I got my coaching job back, um, and I started doing rehab. And I'd been in contact with Jim since college. Mm -hmm. So there was another strength coach. I'm totally off topic now, but there was another strength coach at Richmond who was into powerlifting. He said, hey, let's do a powerlift to me. So I didn't really rehab my neck. I got into powerlifting. Mm-hmm. Um, we did some West Side stuff that, that you know, there's mm-hmm. a handful of articles and videos. Yeah. And that's how I really got into the weight room. I didn't want to have neck surgery. Um, and it, it worked out. How you know, did you end sense? up? I mean, with, with all the chatter right now, because West Side versus the world just came out on yeah iTunes and Amazon all over the place. Total so, side note, I coached Louie's niece at <laughs> Moorhead State. His niece plays soccer. No shit. I, she's like, yeah. you ever heard of Louie Sammons? <laughs> she's a country girl. And I'm like, yeah, I know Louie. That's my uncle. I'm like, that's freaking cool. Uncle Louie, yeah. yeah I'm like, so she wasn't tough enough for rugby? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, no, yeah. She, <laughs> she's going to find out about this. But yeah, so yeah, total side yeah. note, anyways. So, yeah. you know, while the, all that chatter is going on, you were in, what was it, Southside? What do they yeah, call that? Yeah, Southside with Billy Mimnall. With Billy. I mean, you, there were crazy fucks everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, and people, yeah, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah, questions, yeah. I'll answer it real quick. People ask me, why are there not any crazy fuck gyms like Westside, you know, mm-hmm. today? No. Well, there are. They're yeah, always got, are. Find them. They're just not posting their shit all over Instagram. Yep. Because they're working out. They're, they're training. Well, the crazy fucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, crazy yep. fucks don't do shit like that. I remember going, I went into Southside 
<clears throat> that was a crazy fucking gym. That yeah. was like a mini West Side, but probably yeah. even worse because you had some whack fucks oh. in there. Yeah, Lu- at least Louis could contain could- it. Yeah, there was no degree. With, with his vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had no, no containment. containment. Yeah. We trained West Side, if you will, a lot yeah. of West Side techniques. It wasn't West Side because it was South Side. But um, so I went in there one day. I was doing a, a job interview down in Connecticut. How'd you and I, go there? I don't know. What I want to know. I can't like, remember how, how I found it. I think it was, it was on some site that used to have gyms. It might have been your original site. Yeah, that had like local power gyms or hardcore gyms yeah. or whatever and i found it and i'm like oh i'm driving through stratford connecticut i'm gonna stop in on the way back i walk in there with a suit on <laughs> oh, just God. imagine walking into west a, side a squat God. suit yeah yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> a fucking memna in there yeah yeah with, with guys like that and i'm like uh, I'm like can i train guys like yeah sure 10 bucks or whatever it was and i saw vincent and i kind of knew who he was but i didn't quite know and then he had another guy that was training with him uh tt mccray and so I went and I got changed and I came out and Vincent's like, Hey, you want to train with us? Because TT and Vincent trained together and he had no one to hold boards. <laughs> so they would put the board on their chest, lift off and then hold the board. You know how that goes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah. He told me this too, like, you know, a couple weeks later yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I figured it's fine. And that's how I got in with Vincent. Yeah. But I remember walking in the South side one day and it's like, you know, pop, pop, pop. I'm like, what is that? I open the door. It smells like cordite. It, some dude was shooting at a box squat box <laughs> in the gym with a, like, it was like a nine millimeter or something like that. And I'm like, this is like a month in. He really didn't like the box. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, this one will You're go too low. Fuck you know, Louie like, in the box. You know, and they were like arguing <laughs> about like a nine millimeter will go through a person in a, a 45 caliber won't because it's a slower round. Blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and it's totally true. Yeah. A 45 won't go through you. It'll rip you apart. Yeah. And a nine will go right through you. <laughs> yeah. But they were like testing it on a, box on a squad fucking box. box. And I'm like, what am I doing? Ready to bench, Vincent? All right, let's do it. It, was, <laughs> it turned into like totally normal. Yeah. And then there was a guy there named... Um, God, I can't remember his name. He had a 953 squad. I cannot remember his 275, name. 275, crazy. Yeah. I was trying to think of his name just to ask he you would about eat him. His, uh, it'll come to me. It, he was fucking nuts. He's it, the one that at one of the meets, you know, we're sitting there waiting for our luggage, and he comes, he, he's on the luggage thing. <laughs> he's like sitting on it, taking rides around yeah. the fucking he's luggage. He's a big dude, too. Yeah. And, uh, but he, would, he, would, uh, he ate hot dogs all day. And in between squat sets, he would go outside and smoke a cigarette. I remember. Oh, he, God, you know, he was he won the fucking nationals or something that year. Yeah. Mike. My, yeah, yeah. Mike. Um, he. Uh, it was so funny. He he yeah. tore his bicep tendon off. Yeah. His right arm one year, and then the next year he didn't get it repaired, so he just flipped his grip, and tore it off the second year, tore the other one off the next year, and that was the year he won it all or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mike. Um, my God, I can't remember I can't his last name. He didn't last long, but good God, no. he was strong as unreal. It was like an eight. It started with a C, I think. Yeah, it was. It was uh, like an eight twenty one deadlift, a nine fifty three squat. I can't remember what he benched. You know what's fucked up is nobody remembers his numbers. We just know he was strong as fuck. <laughs> yes, but we crazy, know that he was crazy. Crazy as fuck. Yes, and it you was. Know? It was. You see weird things. I remember going in there one day to squat, and. Some guy, and you, I know you guys have seen this at Westside. Some guy had his shirt up and they're duct taping his belly. Yeah. And oh, Dave Barno. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what? And like, ah, he put a marble in his belly button and, and he's got a hernia. So we're going to make sure it doesn't pop out. I'm like, yeah. Huh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and that shouldn't be normal to any of us, but that's normal. Mm-hmm. You just, and, and, and this was like my truly my first extended experience in a place like that i had come to west side once when i was at Pitt, when jim was at kentucky but i had never truly been around it and when we walked in there it was like whoa you know but at one point at south side vincent held the world record in the bench um he he benched 900 in a shirt he benched 600 raw in three weight classes tt mccray benched 900 in a shirt and we trained with like five people so you know 30 yeah. percent of our crew could bench 900 yeah. pounds and then bench five raw v- vincent could come in anytime he wanted and bench 500 
I saw him do 405 for 20 one day because he's like, yeah, it's, I, I kind of want to get a pump after we bench. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, I'll, uh, put 225 on. Let me see what I can do. I'm like, 19. <laughs> like, come on. You know, it was crazy. But when you're around that, it's the same thing as Westside, I'm yeah. sure. It, when you're around that, it's, it's what Jim talked about with the mile. Yeah. I can do this. It's just normal. You know, you I know. might not be able to do, you know, an 800-pound bench, but. Yeah, six hundred. I can do six. Good. Why yeah. not? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I remember going to Southside. I couldn't bench four any time I wanted. Within months, it, it was for me that was normal. You know, yeah. with my awesome arm length. Yeah, I was super proud of that. You know, but it was like it, you're around it, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, this is normal. Guys in the gun the, in the gym bring guns, and they shoot. And okay. They're not going to shoot me. I'm, I'm going to go get my bench workout in today. You know, yeah. and, and, and it, it just, that place was nuts. Yeah, and over time, you ended up with a grand uh, 605. Yeah. 605. And, and a, 760. Yes. Yes. 760 with a, with a belt. I couldn't, I refused to learn the uh, deadlift six, suit because uh. it hurt my nuts so much. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll just yeah, pull yeah. raw. I don't care. Yeah. I'll just pull raw. Now, were you there the day that Vincent was doing max effort work? Uh, missed, I was telling him, Vincent, stop. He missed six, six times. Six oh five. He missed seven times. Seven times. And got it on the eighth. Got it on he, the eighth. Six oh five off of a two board. And every rep looked different. His <laughs> shoulders are flared, his this, his he didn't keep his hips up. And and and, and then he got it. He's like, I knew I could get it. And I'm like, oh geez. If we go to Pro did, did that, chart. Did that take uh, ninety minutes though? Oh, dude, we were in there for a long time when we used to bench. Because Vinny would take 135. Yeah. And we'd, I'd be sitting there like, all right, let's put 225 on. Nope. And they'd be like, six minutes later, they'd still be having a conversation. And I'm like, I'm cold again. You don't warm up when you power lift. But I did my set of five with 135, and I was cold again. Yeah. And I just had to get used to it. But, um, yeah, I was there for that. And it was an awesome display of stupidity and perseverance yeah like once you set your mind to doing something get it done yeah just get it done so it was it was a great lesson even for me because i was still young you know what that's at, a, at that point <clears throat> that is a testament to uh vincent being fast oh incredibly because you're not explosive. doing eight max effort attempts on a bench squat or deadlift that are remotely grinders no does that, he, make, no. Does that make he, sense to yeah, you yeah. vincent yeah. couldn't grind to save yeah. his life and that's where he struggled uh, raw benching is he was so fast with the shirt he almost didn't have to lock it out yeah and then when he really transitioned to the raw work he struggled with like the last three or four yeah, inches he, to he, snap his elbows yeah. and uh i used to get on him about it all the time and i can't bench to save my life so he kind of didn't listen to me he, he's told me this too <laughs> i'm like dude you don't lock your elbows when you do speed work you don't lock your elbows when you do max effort work you you always leave it short so that last inch or two not You're not trained. used to yeah. getting that, so you don't know how to finish. Mm -hmm. And he would fight my ass on that all the time. And I know, because he told me, you can't fucking bench 500 pounds. Don't tell me how to bench. And da -da 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 -da. <laughs> to his credit, I think it was John Botts. Like, ah, put bands on the bar for two weeks before your next meet, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, the bands will force you yeah, to lock. Yeah, force you lock it out. And he finally figured out. And he goes, man, dude, you were right. <laughs> you were right. And me being as humble... As I am, I'm like, I fucking told you, dude, you could have got this months ago because I, I handle that. It's that, you know, that egotistical uh, inferiority complex yeah. that I have. I told you, you should have listened to me. But uh, it, it, it again, but it's 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 just it, he was so determined once he put his mind to what he was going to do. You see it in what he's doing now. He oh, looks yeah. like a damn Abercrombie model. Yeah. Every now and then, I'll send him a uh, a fat picture. Like you can't no. get him to put on ten pounds. Like no. just gain a little you, weight. You know what I do to him though is I'll, I'll just out of the blue I'll I'll go on the Google. And, and we used to eat ring dings. Remember ring dings? Ring dings. And so oh, that's what Jesus he. Christ. So I'll just send him a picture <laughs> of a, of a box of ring dings out of the blue, and and I'll get you asshole. I just want ring dings now, or, so, or I'll send him a picture of a Big Mac. I'll go to McDonald's, and I'll take a picture of my Big Mac and send him a picture randomly. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it's super impressive what he's done. I think he's got an eating disorder. In fact, I know. <laughs> well, he doesn't eat anything. Yeah, but I, it's, it's super impressive. It's like anyone, if you put your mind to it, 
you can get it done. He that, wanted, that's what I yeah, take from him. Yeah, he wanted me to ask you um, how much protein was in a fish stick. <laughs> Not a lot, apparently. <laughs> I can't even defend that story <laughs> because it's even if I give you the context, it's as it's as dumb a question as one could ask. You know that. <laughs> you know that question. You know, there's no such thing as dumb questions. That's wrong. Um, I'm not even going to just let's go to the next question. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm not going to go into that one. <laughs> Ask him about being <laughs> pantsed at oh, Cotrix Casino man. in Vegas. Oh, this is great. Was that Schmicky who did that? No, it was Vincent. Vincent. Schmicky was there, though. So we were out at the Olympia, whatever year it was, and it was Vincent, myself, uh, I think. Kevin Schmicky, a guy who we played with, was there. His wife, Jessica. I can't remember who else was with us. And His wife's name is... Oh, Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Vincent's wife. Vincent's wife, oh, Jessica, okay. yeah. Just, okay. So Vincent's massive at this point. He's 320-something, and he's... I forget why we were there, if it was raw or shirt. It doesn't matter. And so I was in, my, in the mid-threes, 320, 330, something like that. I, it's Vegas. It's summertime. It's hot. So we had gone down to the Hooters, I think, hotel... And I got on a pair of shorts and a T-shirt and flip-flops. I have three articles of clothing on. No boxers, no nothing. <laughs> so I'm leaning over the counter, at wherever it was. I'm just leaning over the counter, catching my breath. You guys remember those days. And all of a sudden, the shorts are on the floor. And my ass is just facing the hotel or the, the casino. And it took me like five tries to get my shorts back up because I had trouble bending down. I couldn't get both arms down to the shorts. <laughs> so You got that huge hog in your yeah, way, too. That wasn't the problem. <laughs> so I pulled up the shorts, and in the process, I found out later, my cell phone fell out of my pocket. I pull up the shorts. Vincent starts waddling through. I'm going to call it waddling. It was running for us. <laughs> He's waddling through, just laughing like that little thing in Return of the Jedi with Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> and he's running through the hotel, and I'm chasing after him. I'm going to kill you, you fat bastard. So we, we get like 10 feet you know, through the thing, and we're both like, ah, I hate you. I'm going to kill you, Vincent. And he's just out of arm's reach, so I can't do anything to him. We get outside to the, to the cab or whatever we were getting into, and I'm like, dude, where's my phone? So his, uh, his, his moment of joy, I ruined it for him, and I'm yeah. so glad I did this because my phone fell out on the floor in the, in the hotel or whatever it was. And so he's like laughing. I'm like, my phone, and his face goes ghost white. I ruined the moment for him. The phone was fine. It was right where it fell. You know, by the time we got ourselves back in there five minutes later. Sorry, Rhodes, if I did that to you, I would not have a conscience towards your fucking phone. I'd be like, too bad. I'll it, buy you a it, new one. It, that's part of the reason why I wouldn't we've care. been friends for 20, 22 years. <laughs> that's just, well, he wanted me to, to me, also, that, would, that, would, that would be Vincent the funniest has part. A, Vincent has a soft spot. He's, got, he's a wonderful human being. He's a soft spot. And we're awful to each other, just like, just like we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's got a soft spot. Jim doesn't have that soft spot. <laughs> unless it's like my guitar. Like, if he hurt my guitar, that would bother him. Yeah, I would. That would that. bother him. But other than that, and I totally understand that. And that's, I love you, Jim. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> he, he also wanted me to ask you guys about uh, the Puccinella seminar. The extends. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is Jim's fault. This is 100% Jim's fault. This is when Jim and Juliet met in person for the first time. No, 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 no. Wasn't? No. no. Is sure? Oh, no, no, that was Murph's in yeah, Boston. That was no. Anyways. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I drive, Jim flies in, we go pick up Vincent, and we, we leave Connecticut at like, dude, it was like four in the morning to get, more, to get to Philly. Fucking miserable. For like an eight o'clock or a nine o'clock I sat start. in the back of his pickup truck, and you never heard a human being bitch more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then Vincent's like, was getting kind of annoyed. I'm like, dude, I got to get this shit out because I'm going to be horrible at the seminar. Yeah. If I don't, I'm like, fuck this. Dude, yeah. fucking, dude, fucking, here I am to fight three fucking in <laughs> I was furious. Yeah. So we, we finally get, we get there pretty early. pretty early. We got way earlier than we thought. Yeah. yeah. So we stopped uh, at the gas station or something and we got some food. And then I, I was walking by, I was walking out and I see it extends. So I buy three packs for each of us. Four per pack, by Four the way. Four per pack. Do you know how many extends would kill you? I have five. No idea. Five. Oh, God. Five. Yeah. So Jim gets in the car. And I'm laughing like a fucking hyena. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, dude, I got it, man. I got it. 
And he's like, everyone uh, here, so you got your own package. And we all took one. You know, and uh, I'm like, dude, we're taking all of them. We're getting, like eight we're, seconds we're getting later, fucking horny. Eight <laughs> seconds later, right? <laughs> so we're like, in, of course, as smart as we are, we're like, we just took one. Hasn't even dissolved yet. It's not even in our stomach. Jim's like, let's take them all. <laughs> And Vincent and I kind of look at each other, look at Jim, like, yeah, all right, whatever. So we all, you know, we break the blister pack open. We take four at once. Basically. I, I almost fucking died, and yeah. I'm not lying. I looked, Vincent, during the seminar, sends me a note, and he said, are you okay? Because I, I, I'm going to, he goes, I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> and I'm not a lion when I've, it, you know, I've taken some drugs before, and I'm like, holy fuck, I was going to die. This was bad. And uh, it's, it's, my eyes, I was shaking so bad, I couldn't form, you know, sentences. Yeah. It was just a miserable fucking thing. <laughs> I regret that more than anything I've ever yeah. done. So we get to lunch. And Dave, I'm talking shit you've was, never. It was horrible. Imagine was, your worst feeling. And it was compounded. And then you have to go do something. Oh, God. <laughs> that people paid to see <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. And so at lunch, we're, Jim gets a piece of pizza, and he's... I couldn't <laughs> hold and, it and, in. And, and, and Steve is like, dude, what's wrong? And so we're like, all right, dude, listen to what we did. And he's like, what? Again, totally normal to him in this world. And he goes, oh, here, have a carbo force. No, that's what I or, said. Or we needed sugar. Sugar, I, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, because, well, I've had a similar experience of during something else. And we, I almost, <clears throat> yeah, another time. And uh, I just poured a bunch of sugar in water, like, you know, buckets of it. And yeah. I, you know, make a long story short, we ended up being okay. Yeah. And the best part was we got home. And, yeah. of course, Vincent, you know, tells Jess. Jess, yeah. And she's like, what did you expect? Like, what was the best outcome? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, exactly. what did you <laughs> What kind of what I'm sitting here thinking. <laughs> but what it does. It, it, it was the a funny room, fifty people, two women. Yeah. <laughs> what did you hope to achieve? Is what she said, and we're all like, huh? <sighs> yeah, we didn't think that far ahead. No, not at we all. We didn't think that far ahead. We just we thought it was. It cool. was awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad I lived through it because it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So it's four won't kill you. <laughs> Five will. Five Holy will. Yeah. shit, Dave. You I'm don't at, test the body. You don't know what it can they handle. They probably don't even sell it anymore. We, we, no, no, we I think they it. still do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's in there that caused that shit. So it's got to be some herb that they, yeah, in massively high doses that we decided to take. Because yeah. obviously, if one's good, four are better. Right? Yeah, we're oh, talking right? about. I mean, the... that's science. Oh yeah, and if you would have snorted them, even better, would have been way better. Yeah, yeah, we should have probably two. would probably would have alleviated be, the side effects. Yeah, we should have chewed two and snorted two. Rhodes, yeah, used a suppository in two. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it, that's probably why I felt. By bad. the way, extends Dave is about the size of this microphone. Yeah, <laughs> for roots. <laughs> <laughs> Boop. Boop. Well, I guess we should probably like uh, answer some questions or something. Look at some of the questions. Yeah. Oh, he's over there snoozing. Oh, is he? No, okay, hold on. Let me get he's on Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can uh, you get that at Elite? <laughs> sure, makes Dave's my like, fucking arms look bigger. No, too, right? it, it's yeah. They yeah. Look, it's yeah. it's the the Wendler cut is. Yeah, I think phenomenal. the Wendler cut's making my triceps pop out a little bit. <laughs> I have no arms. <laughs> it could be the Evian water. All right, um, Jim. What effect did training at Westside have on your thought process that went into five three one? Can I answer that? Yes. I don't. You can go ahead. And I'll answer, answer it. it. I'll answer it and say zero. <laughs> And, and, and here, here's the reason. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I'm going to answer it, because, it, you know, if he answers it and says zero, he's going to look like a dick. If I answer it and say zero, I won't look as much like a dick. And I, and Jim can circle back after I'm done. There's no doubt that Jim learned a lot about conjugate training and the max effort method and all that stuff from Louie and Westside. But if you really know 531 and have looked at 531, it, it really hasn't – it doesn't have anything similar – to a conjugate method ex at all except maybe a three-week wave you know yeah, I, guess I mean th yeah that's probably that, that's probably about it yeah. so where the, the five the other thing would be some weeks we would do five some weeks we would do three and then one so maybe yeah. that but it was never no structured the same way where no five three one came from was i can your, i can tell you right now and th this is not a discredit to Louie in any way no, or no, shape or form. Because I was not doing what that program was designed to do, which was for powerlifting. Yeah. The th <clears throat> I won't rehash the whole story, but there was a – when I – before I even did, you know, went to Westside or even started training, I was very strong. 
And, uh, I mean, I didn't have a very strong bench, maybe 400, you know, 395 or something. But I squatted uh, 725 without a, you know, just belt, uh, clean 335 for five. So it wasn't like, and I did that, on, you know, without the advent. You're not going to believe this, guys. What? Without the internet. Mm-hmm. How'd you do that? And, well, I don't have any <laughs> videos of it. So it never uh, happened, dude. <laughs> so, uh, so I, re- part, of the, part of the impetus was, was to, uh, like, what did I do before? I had fun before. Mm-hmm. I wasn't having fun anymore. And I was like, this is the one thing that I love more. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to train how I want to train. And I kind of look back. I'm like, this is kind of what I was doing a little bit. But I needed something that I wasn't just, we'll just go in and see what happens. I needed, a, like, <clears throat> because I was working, I had just had Mason. And uh, so, you know, you just like, listen, I just want something to do. Point mm-hmm. me in the right direction and let's go. And, you know, that took a long time. But it was... You know, other than that, you know, and the only other thing that the most, I'll, I remember where Louis was when he said this, and he's said this a million times. He always said, always train optimally, not maximally. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, that's always been, and that's when we started using a training max that was much lower. And in, <clears throat> Rhodes, will, Rhodes' athletes will fucking yep. confirm this beyond belief. Yep. If you saw how light our kids trained, Dave, mm-hmm. and how strong they got from training, it is unfucking believable. And I'm talking... Like we, I always said 90%. So if you bench 400, we'll base all your numbers on like yeah. a 360. I'm talking 70%. And our kids get fucking strong. And big. And big. Yeah. I can and see I, that. And it's because every, <clears throat> it's a little different with high school kids because you're not, you're not navigating uh, someone who knows what's going on. I would say that. But Dave, I am telling, I, I am not lying, Dave. I couldn't. I couldn't put into words the how strong we are. Yeah, I have coaches come and, and like people. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, this is how we train. Like, really? It's and then so the, uninspiring. <clears throat> if you if you're expecting this, and I don't like say that in a million, bad way. Million plates going. It's, crazy. it's just like so they're gonna deadlift. They're gonna do dumbbell inclines and pull ups. That's all they're doing today. But yeah. the way, Dave, and then but it's just so. If, Dave, you are if, more than welcome to come into one training session. You'll be blown away. And, yeah. It runs like a fucking clock in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking, one of the things that always stuck with me that you said is you went out to see Ferrugia one time. And the, the thing that Dave took away is I couldn't believe how good the form was. Mm-hmm. And it's not powerlifting form or anything. Yeah. It was kids doing the right thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And First time I've ever seen it in my life. Yeah. And then, you like, know, and you know, our kids don't squat. And it's not perfect, but every rep is below parallel. If yeah. not, they get called out. You know, yeah. just... You know, their feet are on the ground when they bench. Uh, they touch the chest. They're not bouncing anything, stuff like that. And it is, uh, <clears throat> when you do the right things the right way, Dave, magically. It's crazy how yeah. that works. Yeah. Well, I think I need to circle yeah. back a little bit on the 70% just for the people that I, are I'm listening. Just, I just took that number yeah, out of the air. I but didn't, I don't, even if it's 70, 75, or whatever it is, the reason why like 90% was great for somebody that's a high intermediate lifter because their neuromuscular synchronization. Now, technically, it's inter- <clears throat> all of us, we found better progress with a lower training max for that very same reason. Yes. Because when you have a high end of inter and intramuscular coordination, you need two, less. You need, you, yeah, and you get more out of that, just like what Louie yes. talked. But, so you need less. But the opposite, you need more. Yes. Yes. So that's what I'm saying is the high school kids, yes, they're going to need, you know, a lower. Yeah. But with, and you can't assume that they're max. No, you no, know no, what I'm no, saying? No. They're stronger than what they can display oh, because yeah. they well, don't have the ability to truly yeah. display. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. And the yes. other thing is besides like the, <clears throat> the practical reasons, like there's one of me and 50 kids. Yeah. Like yeah. I, um, and you're just like, listen, we don't want to get hurt. Uh, <clears throat> what was it? I wish college coaches would listen to this here. <clears throat> and Dave, I think it's, I do. I think it's very important. Yeah. I think yeah. it's the other vitally thing, important. The other yeah. thing that me and – I talk to Rhodes all the time, and I sent him a video of Boyd Epley, you know, from Ugh. Nebraska. Yeah. And, like, Matt and I are fucking obsessed, and we know it. And his whole thing was we want our guys to be stronger, but our main key is to put muscle mass on them mm-hmm. because uh, <clears throat> that will lead them to – you know, it's – chicken and egg thing well you know it's protection too it's protection but for these young kids like what did you always tell remember we used to go to seminars you can't flex bone Mm -hmm. so we put 
we, my goal is to get the kids stronger by making them bigger. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we body build. That means we do things in such a way that elicit uh, nice hypertrophy. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> we had, and I, the head coach would confirm this, we don't really do a lot of speed work. Now, like I'm talking about running. Yeah. And we run, but we don't do like dedicated stuff. Our, <clears throat> it takes maybe two years, three years, but the kids' speed, like we had a 5'9 kid dunk who has no business dunking. Just grab, and we're like, what the? F yeah. <laughs> Kyle, uh, the head coach, texts me. He's like, you're not going to believe this, man. And it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. But uh, just getting them, and we brought this back, talking about the skill work. <clears throat> we make the kids bigger, and thus they get stronger. And magically, their agility gets better. Yeah. Their speed gets better. Because it's and, all about. And we don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Yeah. yeah. So it's about putting force into the ground. Yeah. yeah. If you want to change direction better, you that's why put the force into the ground. If that's you want to why, run yeah. faster, you know, so buddy, if you're stronger. Buddy will talk your ear about, about this. Yeah. But uh, I, <clears throat> well, so I always tell the kids like, listen, we're gonna beat, we're gonna win the bus meet the bus yeah. game when we walk off the bus. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the yeah. only thing that matters in football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is walking off the bus and looking, and, uh, winning <laughs> the game, winning the game, coming off the bus. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, like it, the big thing that we have problems with, at least, and I'm sure Rhodes does too, and every other coach is you got to get the parents on board to get let, let them eat and i'm not talking like they got to eat organic or they mm -hmm. have to have 300 grams of protein how about you have fucking breakfast yeah, with yeah. more than one egg how about yeah. you lunch that maybe has some meat in there and you have a big dinner stuff like that and yep. just fish that, sticks yeah <laughs> i'm gonna power right through that <laughs> tartar sauce and, <laughs> but anyway <Yeah>. it's uh <laughs> i don't know where we, but anyway <clears throat> we're and to further on this is uh I always experiment. I guess my, I feel like I'm in a fucking lab, and I'm like, yeah. you would do anything I fucking tell you. <laughs> and I fucked but up. But he's got his kids that they will. Yeah. They believe yeah, yeah. in him so much, and he's had such great <clears throat> success that they're like, all right, coach, let's so do it. You know? Three weeks ago, we tried something a little different way. I put a little spin on it. It didn't work out very well because <clears throat> it ruined the entire week because we trained so hard. On Monday, that Wednesday went in a shitter. And then Friday, now we're just kind of getting back. Now it ruins the whole plan. So by training a little lighter and making sure everything is precise, now we can train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Monday. And we don't have – now I call it climbing a ladder. Like every workout's a rung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's say you and I get up to 25, then we do something dumb. We're up yeah. to late. It's yeah. like, man, not, it, and not only does it fuck up your work, it fucks up the entire week. Yeah, well, now we can't run. And that's the thing yeah. that, that it's hard for me to explain to college kids who know everything and coaches that know <laughs> the other thing, more about my job than yeah. I do is what we do today impacts tomorrow. Yeah. Today and tomorrow impact the next day and so on. So I don't care what we do this week. I'm worried about what we're doing over an eight-week span, and it all adds together. And if you slip down the rung, yes. hamstring pull roll an ankle because you're fatigued yeah, you and you didn't step weeks, on someone's weeks. Yeah, uh, mentally you're tired. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to go up. I want my kids to show up like, hey, we're going to, I know he's going to, we're going to train today and we'll be okay. But you're not but dead. I'm, I'm not going to have to put a, you know, a bullet in my head because I yeah. hate it. And uh, now the kids want to show up. Do you remember, and I'm, I know Rhodes does, yeah. when you played football and <clears throat> at the end of practice, how much would you guys run? Do you guys run a oh, lot? We ran, I mean, depend on the day, but some days not that much, oh, but we, we had 40 40s. Yeah. Which was. We ran all the time. Yeah, time. it was. And so. Most of the time was that. Yeah, and, and all practice, you're like, God, this is going to fuck. Like, I practiced for two, uh, two hours, hours, and now, and now, now I'm going to run. Now i got to run, you know, 20, 2500s or something. Yeah, I mean, the 40 40s was more a test of will. Yeah. You know, than anything else. But I, I don't else, put the but, kids through it. We don't even no. have a conditioning test. You show up every day, you're going to be in shape. You're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. So. The. Yeah. Um, the, I was fortunate enough when I was in high school to be introduced to powerlifting very early, but between my junior and my senior year, because they they tested before, uh, two days they would test the stupid bench and the yeah, forty yeah, yeah. and the, the stupid shit that they just did, and from my junior to senior year I went from two ten to two forty five, <laughs> and never ran but my squat went from like 500 to like 660 or something like that and this was single ply gear it wasn't yeah. like crazy ass gear and i remember stepping up to the line and the coach you know looking at this you know the little clipboard yeah, yeah. seeing that i'm 240 or whatever it was 
and looking at last year's, which was five two. I yeah. mean, I wasn't the fastest fucking guy in the world. <laughs> and he's like, ah, this ought to be fucking interesting. Yeah. And it ran like a four nine. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, there you it's go. It's crazy how that, how simple it really is to improve yeah, athletic yeah. performance. Yeah. And all I did was fucking. Now, was granted, smart. it's it, there's better ways to train for football. But it's than, still than what I was doing. But you know, it it weren't a yeah. Well, it's it's exactly what you're talking about. It's the increased muscle mass because I didn't get fatter. Right. Yep. You know, I was probably leaner, and I was stronger. Yep. You know, so thus faster. And it's it's a now my my lateral movement on the other hand was a whole nother <laughs> fucking story. So we're not going to talk about but that. If you, but if if you had done like let's say you played pickup basketball three yes. times a week while doing that, yes, or twice solved. a week, and I would have you know had I had yeah. a coach that would have yeah. you know that known. And it's that's something I struggle with where I am because ultimately for me the coaches make the decision. Yeah. So it's called, well, I want to do single leg work. I'm like, oh Jesus, H mother. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's like we don't need to do that. You want to hit a ball further, run faster, jump higher, whatever. Let's just train. Like to me, I, I have to bow a little bit to coaches' desires, and I kind of have to check off some boxes. So to me, half the program can be the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. Between and then, meaning. For volleyball. Yeah, for, for volleyball, football. football basketball. Because everyone needs the same things. <clears throat> stronger legs, stronger hips, stronger midsection, stronger back, stronger shoulders. Name a sport where you don't need that. So everyone can do the same thing. Then I'm going to treat a volleyball shoulder and a baseball shoulder differently than a football shoulder. Then it can become sport specific, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, I'm, gonna tw- I'm not going to have a baseball player snatch, although I think they could getting that to happen i'm not fighting that battle it's not that it, important yeah it, but, but but my 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 point this is my point is it's that simple just get stronger if you want your pitchers to throw faster or your you know volleyball player to jump higher or hit harder just get stronger what jim's doing at london would work just fine at moorhead but if i tried to sell the coaches on that because of sports specific training and, and all this crap about specializing in, you know, they <clears throat> sport. And I understand why, but sport coaches, they always think about performance, performance, performance. They never let us just build them mm-hmm. with general. It's just like in powerlifting. We kind of did an off season. We did a little more work. We did stuff that we didn't normally do in a training cycle. And then as the meet got closer, you got more and more specific. Why would, soccer be any different now i work with some awesome coaches i don't want to come off the wrong way but it's like guys you got to just build them sometimes and that is basically what jim does with his kids yeah. he builds them slowly and methodically and it's very planned out it's very organized and over the span of four years you're like oh my god this is crazy it doesn't happen overnight strength is a marathon you just you reminded know, you know? me of something how many student athletes because your official title is strength coach right yeah, yeah. okay head the, strength and conditioning head coach. strength and conditioning coach right <laughs> yeah the, the, for fo- now. Fo- yeah follow me on this yeah, one yeah. how many student athletes are you responsible for <laughs> training uh just guess h- hands on or just like uh proud probably, of all the sports so we have about 230 athletes i'm responsible for all of them okay. on some level but with football, there's 100. Uh, volleyball, there's 14. Softball, there's about 20. Um, and Matt has how many you know, assistants? You have one paid assistant? Okay. I, all my assistants are GAs. Okay. okay. So basically, they're, they're – so, so the next question would be, yeah. what's the attrition rate? Like, how many new ones come in each year? Because you're graduating some. Uh, it's about – you know, it's about uh, – you probably get maybe 10% more – freshman then you end up leaving because of the attrition rate over yeah. over time yeah okay so we're looking at 230 athletes and you sure it's just 10 percent? that's 23 attrition 
you know, like new. Uh, how many are going to graduate out of that two thirty? Oh, really? oh, geez. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that's. Uh, so we'll lose twenty from football. We'll lose, you know, like. Let's just say a hundred. I'm yeah, gonna make it uh, fucking yeah, easy, right? Yeah. All right, so two hundred thirty. So over a four year period of time, plus four hundred. So in four total years of with those coming through there, that's six hundred and thirty total yeah. athletes, right? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a coach. Okay, this is a coach. coach. You're, you're, you're going to love where I'm going here, <laughs> This right? is a real, live this, this, coach. This is multi-sport, too. So yes. if it's just a football, it, the, the numbers drop tremendous. This is a very high number because yeah. you're working with multiple sports, right? So it would take so 3,000 divided by 630. <laughs> Carry the four. Okay. So. Pi. It's Pi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do you, you fucking forgot? I forgot. <laughs> you go right to the calculator. Uh, All right, so four thirty. So six hundred. You're adding about a hundred a year. So six hundred. What I'm doing here is we have online coaches now, right? Uh, that are yeah. saying that they've trained. That's now bullshit. these are people that are about thirty years old. Yeah, they've trained over three thousand now they have athletes Bunch of now idiots. you're working with fucking 430 athletes which over a period of four years would add up to 600 so you're going to add a hundred per year off that 600 so to get to fuck if we just add 20 years right <laughs> so, yeah you're still yeah. not you, you would have to train your athletes at that level basically for 30 fucking years basically so, boyd epley Yes. Yeah. I asked Buddy Morris when he yeah. was out here, do you seriously think that you've worked with more than 3,000 athletes? And he said, it's probably close, but I doubt it. And he's yeah. been around since, since 1980. Since, since 1980. Marino. Yeah. He Boyd coached Epley Dan Marino in the yeah. 70s. Boyd Dan was first in 68. And Buddy was second. Yeah, and yeah. Dan right. Marino and Tony Dorsett in the mid-70s. Yeah. So, so my, my, my point yeah. being, these fuckers <laughs> that say that they train <laughs> nah, 3,000 athletes – are full of shit, full of and I'm going to flip and how do you, it. how do you train them online? Well, Anyways. here's the thing. If they want to fucking say that, that just means that they've written programs for them, right? Well, geez, the, with that in mind, how many have I trained you today? A million. <laughs> yeah, easily. All right. All right, fuck, I got programs on the website. We got hundreds of millions of yep. fucking hits yep. over the years. Right. Yep. So where do you draw the hundred million, line? Dave, huh? Nice job. Congratulations. Well, uh, yeah, I mean. That's why million. Jim got you that sweatshirt, huh? Yeah, exactly. Well, I bought the sweatshirt God because right. it makes my traps look bigger. It does. And um, I got free knee sleeves today. Yes. I did too. So I just wanted to solidify yeah. that fact. That yes. If you yeah. ever see somebody's ad copy saying that they've trained thousands of athletes. Unless they're 90 years old. They're full of full shit. Of yeah. Or yeah. they own a training facility that yeah. has multiple strength coaches underneath them in that facility. So, yes. But yeah. even that, because is not that facility, no. I highly doubt has 430 <laughs> yeah. fucking yeah. athletes coming through their doors. Yeah. yeah. Very, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. So what I'm doing is calling bullshit yeah. on a whole lot of people. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the, the problems with the shit online that people bitch about isn't really us bitching about the people that's going to make the difference. It's educating the people who are hiring them. Yes. That's what's yeah. going to make the difference. Yeah. So if you see that in their copy, click away. Yes. Yes. Fast. Three, yes. 3,000. Yes. It's a magic number. It's like me making fun of only three spots, spots left. left. It's the fucking yes. three thousand. It's like where yeah. three thousand come from? Where come from? Yeah. Like come like and exactly. It's not like three thousand one. Yeah. Like what if one guy broke a leg? Yeah. Is that, how does that count? No, it whole? still counts because I called him when he was in the hospital. Yeah, you know, I remember there was uh, a specific coach years ago who would claim that he worked with so you know different teams and mm -hmm. stuff and different athletes, and then you realize that. Uh, Maybe he went into the facility and talked mm -hmm. to the guy, yeah. and you know, like if Rhodes came yeah. in, or if you went to London and yeah, talked like, to yeah. the coach, yeah, yeah, you just like, hey, well, yeah, and you just talked to me and you looked around, like, yeah, well, I but, claim ownership. There's my yeah. consultant, later, motherfucker. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. 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 consulted here. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. So it, it, put it on the resume. There's another fucking 150 I trained. Yep. <laughs> you got anything else that I didn't see here? I can yeah. just look at. We, is let's, volleyball hey, practicing? Yeah, let's yeah. get let's get to our second question. <laughs> ah, nice. Oh shit! All right, uh, here's one on a similar topic. What team did Matt play volleyball for? Oh, ooh, that's Louie. 
right? Or is that no, 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 that's no that's Dave. Dave. Ooh. That's so Dave. D. Dalenberg. You know what? You can probably so. tell this story because everybody today listening to this probably has no There's fucking no idea. idea. So when I went up to West Side the first time, it, I was probably yeah, I'm six four. I was two hundred and fifty pounds. I probably looked two ten at best. At best. <laughs> at best. And <laughs> when I walked in, you know, Dave was there, uh, Zippy at that time. Uh, Truck Vogapool. I mean, it was unreal. I was like, oh, what did I get myself into? So I'm standing around. I'm looking useless. And <laughs> Dave Dave comes over to me. And I think I had said, you know, trying to name drop and, like, try to, like, have someone talk to me. And I'm like, oh, I know Wendler, blah, 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 blah. and Because Jim was writing for the site or something at that point. Mm-hmm. And Dave's like, hey, we're going to belt squat. And I know why. It's the same reason Vincent ended up asking me, so I could help load the plates. <laughs> you know, Dave well, you, back in those days, you had to pull the pin oh, yeah. or whatever. And Dave, Dave didn't two-man, two-man care operation. about me. He I mean, it was in help. the corner. Yep. Well, and I totally understand that. I'm like, yeah, cool, let's go belt squat. That's not what I said. I was like, okay, let's go. Because I kind of knew who Dave was at the time. And so I get a call from Jim you know, <laughs> a week or so later, two weeks later. And he goes, hey, you went to Westside? I'm like, yeah. And he starts laughing. And he's like, Dave called me. And he goes, who is the fucking volleyball player you sent to Westside? And Jim's like, he's really thinking, like, volleyball player? And then he goes, oh, you mean Rhodes? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I look good in those spandex, though, let me tell you. No, you didn't have spandex. I, I had that. to put a baked potato in the front. but <laughs> Big old man knuckle yeah. down there. Yeah, but, yeah, that was uh, – I thought that was, so whoever whoever asked that question that's that's going back yeah, 20 that's, years that's, yeah, date, that's dating back. yourself that's 20 you years you know and it's 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 actually validating a lot of points that I think people mm-hmm. miss today is you were willing to make a trip to learn yeah you know you know go into a, a, a very scary place yeah you know <laughs> yeah. what what most people would consider a very scary place very you know yeah. very hostile you know it yeah. Yeah. wasn't hostile to me but right. you know I lived it so yeah. but it's w- funny watching you know cuz I should probably address because there was a ton of questions asking about the documentary. Kenny Patterson and I are going to sit down and we're going to address, you know, a lot of the yeah. things that are in the documentary. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay. I've seen it twice. Probably watch that this weekend. And, um, <laughs> you know, people are asking, you know. <laughs> After Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's, what's real, what's not You got to see real. shot color. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So they're asking what's real, what's not real, and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's really hard because Kenny and I were there for – you were in the Demarest days, which to me is the fucking that's yeah. The I mean, Kenny was there four years before me. I was there a few years after him, so he was there during the commercial gym time. But I mean, we have fourteen years basically yeah. together, or ten years there together. It's hard to piece together because we were thinking, how cool would it be to get, you know, three or four guys that all trained during the same time frame yeah but there was so much overlap because so many people were just there for a few years, and that's not a bad thing. But and pretty much everybody got kicked out. You know, right, very yeah. few left. But I mean, even Chuck got kicked out. Right. You know, Mike Ruggiero <laughs> got kicked out. Kenny got kicked out. You know, I almost got kicked out. I I don't know how I didn't get kicked out. <laughs> you know, but you know, it, it's there's a lot of stuff that the movie was for the most part real. You know, but it's hard for Dave. Like, you're not going to sell a movie without being sensational. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, I've yeah, seen some yeah. clips and I. Well, I mean, the, what, the facts that they're putting in there are, there, there's nothing. There, let's put it this way: there was some shit in there I didn't think should would be in there. You, you know, the story between Panora and Chuck and the meat and Louie calling Chuck's depth and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I didn't think that would. I, I, yeah. I was surprised that was there. You know, because that's was something that even the West Side guys don't even talk about. Yeah. You know, so it was from that standpoint. But there is. Some parts that were a little since it was just it's just I don't want to say anything was bullshit, but there was a lot of things that could be added, right. you know, to yeah. be able to yeah, to put things context. in context, a, 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 a little better context yeah. because it's it's not like all the everybody hung out together. It's like you went there, you do, trained, do, and you <clears> left. Do you yeah. want to hear you the, the best story about this? Yeah, we were in uh, me and Dave were in uh, I don't know we were some meat or something. And we, you and I were eating. We always, because we always went together and we're friends, we hang out. And one of the guys we were eating, 
with a bunch of the guys from Westside, and uh, me and Dave like, oh, I'm, no, I think you had already left. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm going to go back to my room. And the guy's like, you know, what, <clears throat> what the hell, man? We never get to hang out and stuff. I'm like, dude, I live fucking 10 minutes from you. I don't hang out from you. So just don't take it personal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I we left. Just and dude, his face, he's like, oh. I'm like, I, I just want to go back to my room, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and, so the questions are yeah. weird that are being asked because it's... They think it's like a motorcycle club where we hung out Yeah, afterwards. it's like you trained, you left, yeah. you know? You all shared the same passion. of. It's kind of like our football team at Arizona. We weren't... There weren't huge cliques. It's just... Yeah, like that, I, the football team's yeah. a great example. I, I, yeah. I, I relate with you guys. We lift, and then yeah. I go home to my other life. Yeah, yeah. then people and, will ask you about players that came in two years after you. Like you're supposed to know yeah. their story. Yeah. I didn't. I, there was you know? <laughs> my senior year. There were, you know, and that's not like I was a. I was a walk on. Yeah. And I and I'm like, I, I've never seen that guy before. He's on the team. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then even when you're a walk on, yeah, like, you yeah. don't know the stories of the seniors. No. Yeah. Right. No. Right. You know, because right. there's there's so many. Right. And then you know, like I I, I talk to Jim. We talk all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I talked to Kevin Schmidtke, another guy that I played with. And those are the only guys I talked to from the football team. Yeah. I, my senior year, we had 120 guys on the team. And not that any of those guys are bad or anything, just no. Like Jim's my friend, and and Schmicky, they're the only two guys I've stayed in touch with. Yeah, and it just it's probably it sounds similar to what Westside was in a way. Like guys would go to my sister's parties, and we but we didn't, you know, I hung out yeah. with Jim and, and. I mean, it was it was it, it, Jim just, was there. I mean, it was it was a hard place to train. It was not an yeah. easy place oh, to I train. Bet. It was a hard environment to train in mentally, you know, physically probably easier than mentally. But outside of that, you know, I don't want to spend this whole time talking about that because it's kind of irrelevant to what we're – what was the question? <laughs> what the fuck? It was on ball, ball. Uh, oh, we are – yeah, we got – I answered that. Let's yeah, move what's on. what's the next one? <laughs> we going to talk about my uh, luge career? <laughs> all right. Uh, I think this might be to Matt, but you can all Uh-oh. answer. Do you miss Rhodestown? Anyone, oh. anyone you feel is carrying on the legacy? You know fucking <laughs> Alan, man. We talked about this <laughs> yes. during the podcast. Listen yes. to this, and this is funnier than fuck. <laughs> So I, I have Alan on the podcast, and he's we start talking about that dinner. You know, oh, the, that was fun. The chicken wing dinner. R- Rhodes. Yeah. And did, he didn't remember did he, his yeah, name. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he didn't remember his name. He just knew him as the chicken wing guy. <laughs> he, and then, and then, he shows, then he shows up, and it's like, hey, this is the chicken wing guy. <laughs> you know, and Alan, Alan wasn't even drinking. This was just fucking Alan. You know, it's just normal. <laughs> oh. Um yeah, but yeah, I mean the the Roadstown can probably yeah. should be addressed. There were yeah. a lot of questions about yeah, that. Yeah, that what is some... it for those that don't know? Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the backstory on this because it's really sad, um, in a really way that everyone should laugh at me a little bit. So, I think I can answer this telling the story. So I was going through a horrible breakup, and uh, I was super depressed. I was towing the ledge. You know, I had the razor blades out the whole nine, <laughs> with, and I was with getting, Jim. No, just by myself. Right. And, I've uh, always been his booty call. Yeah. And at, 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 at this point, I was over 300 pounds for the first time consistently, and I was noticing, holy crap, I, I can't tie my shoes. i got to wear flip-flops. All my socks are ripped. All this. So I started jotting down fucking horrible. little things that like, I couldn't do. And one night after work, I sat down on my computer, and I wrote Maintain it. Maintain a relationship with a female. Yeah, that's impossible for me. <laughs> and uh, fuck. it's not my fault. It's their fault. Uh, fuck any other way except on your back. <laughs> obviously, yeah. So I, 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 uh, I wrote it in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I, it was just for my kind of pleasure so I wouldn't jump that night or whatever it was. <laughs> and I emailed it to Jim. Jim apparently loved it. Didn't, you know, message me back or anything. And... <laughs> The next day, I'm getting emails. Like, can I be in Rhodestown? I'm like, what? I sent this to Jim like six hours ago. He put it in his log, and it just, people loved it. At that time, it was, you, you, was, you were proud to be big. Oh, yeah. It was a struggle, man. Yeah. And, it was an honor. And, and so it was just, literally, it was a, I'm super depressed. This makes me laugh. It's painful. I'm it, not going to yeah. jump tonight because i wrote this and i chuckled and you probably couldn't and climb to the ledge to do there's so. there's no way i would have tripped over the ledge and i would have landed <laughs> love to kill yeah. myself but there's no way i'm getting to the top of that yeah, building. yeah you know yeah. and if i i was fat Can't enough woo. if yeah. i jumped off the bridge i probably would have bounced and yeah. the, the the visceral fat would have saved me <laughs> you can't roll up the stairs no, you know that's right. but that's how that, that's how it started and it was you know i was super angry back at that those days anyways because mm-hmm. i'm like ah if you're you know, any man under 200 pounds is a woman and all this stupid stuff I used to say. Um, I don't miss it, but I'm so glad I did it. 
mm-hmm. like the experience of, of of doing what we had to do yeah to to like <clears throat> my goal was to squat this and bench that and this is what i have to do to get there and it so it's again it's kind of like that thing with vincent it's a it to me it's a my own version of a perseverance like i have a goal what am i willing to do i'm so glad i did it i i wish i had done things differently but yeah. man it was awesome and it's the, still a process that takes more than just training to achieve yes you know especially if you're trying to be the strongest yeah you know that you can be you're going to have to go up weight classes yeah i still agree with that i think yeah. you should go up and then come back down you know once you figure out that what point. maximum yeah, density yeah. is yeah but so it's, it's it's hard man yeah. gaining the weight's hard then when you get there it's miserable keeping it all you can do is make fun of it Yes. Jim, Jim and I did yes. it all day long. Yes. And you call yourself oh. fat and you weren't fat. You yeah. were big, little, you know, little bit of fat. But it, it uh, I always laugh people that can't lose weight. I'm like, it's pathetic. No, it's gaining like, weight's it, it, way harder. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's way it's, it's, hard, Like it's truly gaining think weight. Think about this. Is, to lose weight, you don't have to do something. Yeah. Don't eat. <laughs> Isn't that, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about, like, we talk mm-hmm. about. Everyone says America's this and that. I'm like, our big problem is obesity. We're just asking you not to do something. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really a weird. <laughs> put, yeah. put, put our biggest fork. problem is we have too much. Yeah. yeah. Put the fork down and go for a walk. Yeah. But it's, you know? it's just to put things in perspective. I know, yeah. understand there's psychological elements. Yeah. Yes. Obviously. This. But it's, it, it can be that simple. It's kind of like training athletes. It can be complicated, but if you break it down to its simplest form, which I always try to do, it's not complicated. I don't think my job's hard, you know, gaining weight. It's not the hard. hardest, eat part, more hardest part of, and I remember buddy Morris said this hardest part of being a coach is not the programming. Oh, it's the easiest part. It's, it's the communication. Dave and I talked about yep. this yeah, earlier today. Yeah. It's under, you know, dealing getting, with the coaches, dealing yeah. with the kids on your level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would never in a million years do that job. If I, if, even if like Ohio state called me, yeah. unless like I would work under someone, I'm like, you guys deal with everything. Just let me deal with the athletes. It's, yep. Uh, and that was one of my, <clears throat> when I first started working at elite FTS, like full time, it was like a, it was tough because I was like, well, this was my dream. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm like, cause once you're out of that loop, you're out, you're out of the loop, man. Mm-hmm. There's like, yep. you, you can't really get your foot back in. And it was, <clears throat> I didn't have any regrets or any, like, should I do it or not? I knew I'm like, it just sucks that you have this vision of what something could be and you know, it could be, yeah, you know? Is that makes like you know? But then like, you get a little piece of it though, because I kind of got this when I was in Toledo and I interned as a strength coach with the strength coach yeah. for a little while. I got a little bite of it, and it was sour, man. It was like, ah, man. Well, what I'm saying you is, know. it could be different. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And I really and <clears throat> it's, it's not like terribly far off. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't, <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> wish for a banana and i got an apple it's yeah. still a banana it's yeah, just yeah. fucking moldy yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. moldy banana that was yeah. Rhodes's name in college by uh, the way. Yes. <laughs> moldy <bananas. Yeah. laughs> yes. but you know i i think part of that is i think part of why strength and conditioning at my level is kind of the way it is is because strength coaches fault because we're total douchebags and well, does that make sense? Like, well, I think there's in, there is a group of guys yes. that ruined it for everyone by yes. saying yes to everything. And yeah. it's like, uh, <clears throat> imagine like being a girl and then dating a dude, and you're like, uh, you know, my last girlfriend. You know what she did? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. God damn it. Yeah. I have to do ATM. <laughs> yeah. But it, 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 but it's, it's that's ass to mouth. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, I saw strength coaches literally. Uh, had zero fucking dignity. I'm like, oh. you got to stand up, man. No. Like this is, and I always I tell this to the some of the kids and stuff, you know, about playing football. I said, listen, we're not curing cancer here, but no one else is either. Our job's important. Yeah, like who, who, no one's curing yeah. cancer, as far yeah. as I know. But I, I <laughs> you know th- what I'm saying, like Dave, what, if, if, if this is like an existential crisis we're having here. But like, it's depressing when you're like, man, I don't, I lead FTS and I sell racks and. And I know, like, we learn, you know, you have a bigger yeah. vision. But it's like, you know, what am I doing? It's like, man, your job's fucking important. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah. <clears throat> that's what I wish strength coaches would do because your not, job isn't to, your job is to <clears throat> develop fucking killers. Yeah. You know, as far as, yeah. like, for football and stuff. Yeah. And now you're, uh, 
fucking filleting anyone that uh, comes by. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, that it, means fellatio, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All these words I'm learning, I can't keep up. I need to start. Yeah. Hey, someone but, Google yeah. fellatio. Go but, to uh, X hamster. I think. <laughs> what I what I mean what I mean by Dave, I, I write think that it's, down. <laughs> X hamster. <laughs> There's a lot of people right now googling that. That's right. <laughs> um, Google lemon party. Yeah. What I what I mean when I say like I think strength coaches are douchebags, you know I'm one of them, um, but I, I think what happens is, uh, it's how we present ourselves to administration, how people see us, and so how do, you know I wear a t-shirt and shorts to work, and then I wear a t-shirt and shorts to the staff meeting, and then they see me yelling and hey let's run and then whatever we're doing and you you. you <clears throat> We look like the kids. We act like the kids. Why would people take us seriously? We say stupid stuff. When people shoot, when a coach shoots down an idea, I'm guilty of this. You know, it's kind of like what JL was saying. Uh, no, you, you, can, you can lift weights. I mean, I'm telling you this is how we should do it. And the coach says, well, you know, no, I don't know if I like this. And then you just, ah, yeah, you're wrong. This is how it's supposed to be done. So you act like an idiot they're going to treat you like an idiot. If we presented ourselves better, uh, go to a staff meeting with khakis and a polo. It ain't hard to do. And I'm guilty of this. When you talk to a coach, it's what Jim just said. It's about communication. I know more about my job than every single coach on campus put together, plus a hundred. Mm-hmm. But, the thing but is, if I don't communicate it properly and I don't present myself properly and I, and I, and I screw it up, of course they're going to think I'm an idiot. Of course, we're going to get judged a certain way. Yes. And there are coaches out there that are strength cheerleaders that yell and swear. And it's the idiot that should be wearing an XL that wears a medium, you know. And it's like, dude. Well, if you don't you know, know what to do, yell. Yeah. <laughs> and so we kind of look like idiots, in my opinion, because of FBS football. You see these guys on the sideline and you're like, oh, my God, this is the hype videos with the coaches painting their faces. And it's like, dude. You're ruining our profession. This is why we're not respected by athletic directors. Not in all cases, but in some cases. This is why coaches look at us like idiots. Because we are. We're meat sticks. That's, this is what we do for a living. How do we as coaches who want respect, who want to be treated fairly, who want to be respected when we say this is how you're supposed to train, well, it's up to us to present ourselves in a way to facilitate that and it's not going to happen now yeah but you see a lot of this nonsense and and it it doesn't when i when some of the coaches don't like me i'm like ah this is my fault well you know the funny funny thing here is the it comes down to personal accountability because you answered kind of your own question a couple times there you know how do you change it you would you it's your own personal accountability yeah so the coaches that are making fun of all the athletes that are coming in because they're lazy and they don't take things seriously mm-hmm. and they're a bunch of pussies or whatever it is are the same guys that can't take personal accountability for their own communication <laughs> right. but point the finger at yes. the administration yes. and say you guys should be able to yeah. understand us better yeah so they're actually so, acting no different than what they're making right. fun of right and it you took know. me a little while to figure this out. I'm not a horribly confrontational person, but when someone disagrees with me, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I don't always respond well, and my language is awful. And it's like, well, no wonder why some of these coaches think I'm an idiot. It's because that's what I showed them. It's not their fault. No, they're it's just going to respond fault. to what they see. Yeah, and they want their, the best for their team. Totally understand that. I want the best for their team. I've done a bad job in some cases of – helping them understand man if you win i win you know i get an extra t-shirt kind of thing and so i, I think that's it's a very good you point, know Rose. i, I yeah. think that's part of it it's it's if we change the way we act we might eventually get viewed as not support staff that answers to people we get viewed as support staff that works with people I Does that make sense? <laughs> eh? Eh? Write that shit down. Yeah, he's been working on that for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. I s- a little bit. No, that's a, that's. No, really but you know, I think it's. I don't know. Not two weeks, just about two or three yeah, days. Yeah, that's a good point. It's yeah. an excellent point. You know, I, like it, that. It, I mean, across the board with you know personal trainers and everybody else. When when I came out of college and was doing that, I was more or less just a servant. Yeah. You know, but over a period of time now today they're seen a little bit differently 
you know, JL seen differently than mm-hmm. the, the way I was seen when I was training people. Mm-hmm. They still got a little ways to go. Yeah. Um, but because it's a business, I think that they might be a little bit ahead of the strength coaches because yes. th- it directly hits the revenue. Yes. You know, yes. the strength coaches. And once the strength coaches pull that shit together, they're yeah. going to see increased revenue. Yeah. And, you know, because look at the ones that have created, I call them fictional jobs. You know, like the strength coach yeah, can yeah, only yeah, earn yeah. so much money. Yeah, so they, but then they become yeah. this title so they can earn, earn way more, more money. Yes, yes, look yes. at the people that fill those positions and look at how they communicate, you know, and how they dress and who they communicate with. Mm-hmm. They're still the head strength coach. All right. But they're in a, they're not titled that. The only thing I will say, though, is. <clears throat> this is goes down to actually Dave Chappelle. Like, what did they do to get that title, though? Did they sell their soul? Did they sell yeah. out what they believe in? And that's the, what I'm. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't mean you you have to be a fucking meat stick, right? But I know some of these guys. I'm going to say in most cases, yes, because and, and there's there, a thousand people that want the same job. Oh uh, yeah, and I yeah. and there's a difference between presenting a different. Like, you know what, I'll be a little more professional. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to make sure. And selling and, your soul. And, and then being like, well, whatever you need, man. You yeah. know, I'll. Yep. Yeah. But so and, you, uh, you look at some of, the, some of the issues in college football with. Like, I'm going to give you a real quick thing. Sorry. Yeah, no. We have uh, our trainer at London worked at different schools. And she said 80% of the, and she's just making this number up, mm-hmm. of the injuries she saw on football teams were mostly training related. Think about that for a second. We've never, ever had a training injury, ever. And we also, our kids are fucking strong. Like, how much is that? If, would you, wouldn't you rather have a little maybe, like, I don't really agree with what he's doing, but he's doing good, and win? Yeah. You would think. Or just, you would think. You know, and that's where I just, that's why I I get kind of, uh, like, things get lost to me Mm -hmm. that, you know, those guys could still have those positions, but they could, you know, stand up for a little bit. Yeah. For, yeah. And, yeah. and I'm not, and I'm sure some of those guys, there's some <clears throat> Joey Batson, right? He's still Clemson. in Clemson. I mean, yeah. he's, <clears throat> that guy has yeah. been around forever and uh, he's gone through some tough times. I remember mm-hmm. people getting mad at Clemson, like they're not strong enough. It's like, well, Joey Batson's not a, he's a better coach <laughs> than he mm-hmm. was five years ago or whatever. And, you know, so, I mean, uh, Chris, I think Chris Doyle, I guess, does a good mm. job. I mean, Boy yeah. Epley did a tremendous mm-hmm. job. I mean, tremendous yeah. job. Yep. And uh, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I just, I love what I do so much. And I, <clears throat> when I, my kids go on to other schools. Now, granted, our, our kids aren't right now going to Alabama or Ohio State. We have one kid at Ohio State. I should take that back. Anyway, uh, the, the drop-off. Uh, for most strength coaches other than maybe the big schools and a couple here is so massive as far as uh, being good. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Rhodes. I just went off on a tangent here. No, but I, but the kids always bring their workouts back, and I'm like, listen, man, you're going to have to do this. Yeah, Because and, it's the uh, latest trend. It's what's and it's hot. Like, and it's like, oh, man, like you, the kids got weaker. How is that fucking fun? I to me it's always because I would How see them and they're not just weaker Dave they get worse. Yeah, I would see them at Westside and over the summer we have a couple that will come back, that not football but you know, <clears> track and field and yeah. stuff like that. And I'll look at it and they're they're still beginners when it comes to strength training. They're always and are. so I always look at it and I'm like, I I wouldn't have done this shit when I was in high school. No, no. like what the fuck you know no. they they've been training with weights for four years if they're in high school at best. At best. At best, if they make it to the college level, maybe they have a couple years of training experience. That's They're still most beginners. likely not good. Still, still beginning. You know, if you're yeah. fortunate, you'll get people that are coming up, you know, through Jim's program, and then be like, "Holy shit, I can start these kids with my main players." Yep. You know, yeah, they can train at a higher yeah. level. But, but, but here's the thing: it sounds the, great. The fragile know, and, egos of yeah. strength coaches. You're gonna go through my introductory I had, program. I had a you know kid, what I mean? I had a kid go to a major school and blow every testing. They test, you know, did 40 bench press, vertical jump, standing long jump. Blew everyone away on every position except for one dude on the bench. Okay, and uh, he got 20, I think. This is a, a you know college. Yeah, for, yeah. Uh, 
college freshman. freshman. Everything. Yeah. Forty time blue, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I know these. I know who these guys are, and I know who you're talking about. <laughs> they said like they took him aside. Like, what the fuck you been doing, man? Like, it's insane. And I'm not saying like only my shit works, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but then they kind of poo pooed what he did. Like, uh, it's not. We're gonna do something better here, different. And now he's. I have. I got him back for the summer. And like, how do you get weaker? How the fuck did you get weaker? And so we've, I've had him for six weeks now. I'm going to have him another maybe four. Uh, <clears throat> guess what happened, Dave? And he's like, I don't understand. I get so strong here. This is going to sound I, fucked but I, up. But, but I never lift that heavy. I, I know the answer to this because we had this exact same situation. Louie had this happen at Westside with a kid that played for Virginia Tech when they were winning yeah. national champ or they, yeah, yeah, they were they were really yeah. really good, and Louie would send him out, and as a lineman he'd be thirty forty pounds up. He'd be strong as fuck. He would come back weak as fuck. I mean, yep. weaker to the point like, how is this fucking possible? Do you have mono and yeah. AIDS? Yeah. And, you know, I <laughs> I used to work with the kid's dad. You know, and the kid's dad would be like, I don't understand. You know, and so over the summer it's like, okay. Half the fucking summer spent getting him back to where yeah. he was, then building him back up, and then the next year it happened again. Yep. And I remember pulling the kid aside and saying, you know what? When you go back, whatever exercises they have you do, tell them your shoulder hurts <laughs> or your knee hurts. And then go to the gym. <laughs> yeah, like start yeah. eliminating yeah. You know, the exercises except for the accessories. But then tell them that, you know, because he was box wide and all that other stuff, that box squats don't bother my knees at all. So, oh yeah, yeah. So then the third year he comes back and he's a little bit stronger, not a lot, but a little yeah. bit. And it's like, well, what did you do? He said, you know, all those injuries you were telling me I had. <laughs> I got them. I, I got a rap sheet a mile long. Right now. <laughs> and, and, they um, won't. They won't draft him now, though. He fucked himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's Whatever. the way. He, it's fucked yeah. up, you know. Yeah. But it's how he had to get around it. Where it comes down to the communication again, you know, the yeah. coaches communicating. And with you know, the players I, I too. get yeah. where they're saying yeah. though, because if some kid came over to our place and said, "This is what yep. I do," and I'm, eh, it's not going to mm-hmm. happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm not right. I understand it, but I would, it, I will work. And I tell it. We've had it. We had a transfer come in last year, and I said, and he's fucking strong. I, I don't claim him as mm-hmm. you know, like I, although technically, right, he's. He yes. counts like 10. Yes. A thousand or something. But anyway, like I asked him, I said, you're strong, dude. I, would, you can, <clears throat> I trust you because he's a, one of those kids like you got to kick him out of the gym. I'm like if you want to do something, you know, and you feel something works, I'm like, I'm totally cool with that because you got here a certain yep. way and I'm not going yeah. to take that away from yep. you. Yep. And he's like, no, we're going to go. And uh, he got stronger during the season. It's crazy how that yeah. works. <laughs> All our kids are stronger. Yeah. We had kids gain weight this year during the season. Gain weight. That's good. Yeah. So, but that has a lot to do with the the coaches, not me, because they don't run them in the ground. Back so. to the questions. What was the <laughs> yeah, we our got some third good. question? Yep. We got some good ones. Um, back on the West Side topic. Why do you think Chuck Vogelpohl would go so insane with lifting? I'll answer that and make it quick. He didn't. He was very internalized. He wasn't going insane when lifting. You know he. I handled Chuck for most of the WPO meets, and the, the he is very internally motivated, and it drives him to a point that's – it's out of control. If you know the what the arousal curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he hits that peak, but he, he goes a couple notches too far. And um, he didn't understand that he would go a couple notches too far. So we had to try to find ways to, like, keep him away yeah. from doing that. And part of it was, like, keeping people like Chicken Hawk and Bob Coe and keeping people the fuck away (laughs) that were trying to get him more fired up. It's like I would sit there and try to talk to him about things completely not related to the Because he's doing that for himself. Yes, because he will get there. Well, the the problem I think people have, and this has nothing to do with Chuck, although it may relate, is let's say we are in our gym on Fridays and we're squatting. And, you know, we drive in. It's Friday morning. Everything, eh. And you have to reach a peak level of performance and you have to do something mentally there because it's just Friday. It's just another damn day. Then you go to a meet, just waking up in the morning, you're already at the level. Yeah. 
yeah. but you don't realize it. And so then you take it up like, well, usually I do this, 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 this. You don't need to do that anymore. And it's like, man, now, again, we've reached the peak, and now phew, we're falling yeah. down again. Yeah. So uh, the, the one that's, thing. The thing is, when people talk about Chuck like that, mm -hmm. he, is <clears throat> the, he is not like that at all. I don't know where that maybe people talk about it a little bit. He's very intense, but he's serial killer intense. Yes. For, and he, like, you know, I've seen him miss weights and add weight and mm -hmm. then do it for three. Like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, he's not screaming at all. I mean, maybe when he's doing the rep or something. Yeah. But it's not like he's, uh, you know, yeah. flagellating himself. No, no, no. He's <laughs> internally yeah. driven. Yeah. 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 What I tell people is, you know, the, the most impressive thing about Chuck that everybody seems to miss is he was always the first person in the gym setting everything up. Yep. And he was always the last person out of the gym making sure everything was put away. So everybody wants to emulate and try to be like Chuck Show up when, they when, when they approach the bar by screaming and hitting butt in the bar and all the stuff that just kind of came out of him by accident. I think that... But they don't want to emulate the things that he did on well, purpose. Chuck did that yes. stuff, I think, as a reverence and respect that he had for that place. Yes. Uh, I really think that. And I, I see it now when I'm at the school, like I have a respect and like it drives me nuts when we go in and some other team will go in there and they just leave the fucking weights out. And, oh. I, and I tell the kids, I said, listen, this is your weight room. Other people may lift in here, but so if someone leaves a mess, guess whose responsibility it became? It's ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now maybe you go say something to someone. I'm not telling them to beat them up, but hey, next time you're in here, you know, well, that was Chuck 100% yeah. because he was the first person, if anybody was slacking or fucking up, he was the first one that says, we need to kick this fucker out. Yeah. You know, because he took it to all, all mm -hmm. levels. Like, this gym runs, you know, a certain way, and it's how it's going to run. And it wasn't being a dick. It's just this is anything it's that was going to pull it down needed to be the fuck out. Mm -hmm. And that's how he was. But his modesty is – Jim did an interview with him, right? And I was there. It's like, we wanted to do an interview for the site. It's just, Chuck, will you answer some questions? Jim, I swear to God, this, Jim's got the fucking paper and notebook on the reverse hyper. And here's the questions. And he would read the question, and Chuck would, like, look at it. And Jim would say, well, what about? And then would basically answer it. <laughs> yeah. And then Chuck would say, yeah, that's right. That's right. The, so did you, he the, answered. He couldn't even. You know what I'm saying? His, the, the big thing yeah. is why I did that was to show that. Everyone wanted to do what Chuck did. Mm -hmm. I remember this because that's when I think that Vogelpol video came out. Mm -hmm. And Chuck was doing all these different things. And it's like, well, Chuck does that because he's been doing this for 25 years. What did you do in the beginning, Chuck? I remember seeing at the old video of Chuck squatting in squat stance. Squat stance. Mm -hmm. Walking backwards. Mm -hmm. And he was probably a 181, 198 mm -hmm. at the time. And you need to do that for 10 years or, yeah. you know, maybe not 10, but you know what I'm saying. I think the first the four, whole thing was like, yeah. you don't do this. My first four years at Westside, we didn't have a mile lift. You remember your belt squat machine? It was a it was wood. wood. Yeah. You yeah, just it was a wood base. dipped your balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, what else you got? All right. Uh, best advice for a strength and conditioning intern at the college level. <laughs> Is he talking to me? Keep <laughs> your mouth shut and yes. just do do the work. No matter, it's, that yeah. was my big fucking downfall yep. was that yep. and, and do what you're asked. Yep. Because Matt will tell you, and Matt's going to probably answer a little better. In any business, especially strength and conditioning, but every other business, it's all about who you know. Yes. It's always about who you know. And yep. I always make, well, so-and-so got a job. Well, that's how the world world real yes. world works. So. Yes. Keep your mouth coaching shut. tree. Yeah, it just yes. that's how it works. You know I what? have one now. I have yeah. three head coaches. There you go. That used to be Good job, guys. buddy. Huh? It's yeah. a, it's a sapling. so I, basically. It's a sapling. <laughs> is there? Well, I would say the big thing is you know remember when we were 20, 25 years old, we knew everything. Mm -hmm. I know more than you do. You're 25. I've been doing this since before you were born. If Rhodes you always has some good stories for me. He's like, you're not gonna believe the shit that these people. Oh, it's on. unreal. <laughs> but it's 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 come in 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 in. I think if you totally disagree with the guy you're working for, completely immerse yourself in what they do. Understand why. Understand the program inside and out, even if you hate it, because it's more tools in your toolbox, and you can always take something great away from it. Or even you learn you totally what not to do. Exactly. At the very least, you know exactly what you don't want to do. You know what the other thing is? You know what we fucking forgot? is uh -huh. This is where you learn to coach, not program. Yeah, yeah. And so it doesn't matter who your coach is. 
if like you know yep. whatever you're doing, learn how to coach. coach. And one of the things I, I had a uh, a kid come in this morning from uh, uh, intern. At, he's at South Carolina. He lives in the area, uh, and he's like, "Can I come in and talk?" Yeah, sure. Best book on training for me: Men are from Mars, Women are from Venus. <laughs> you know that 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 relationship mm-hmm. book. Yeah. Because when I was personal training, I had all housewives, and I talked to them like they were football players, yeah. and I didn't make any money. <laughs> and I read that book, and I'm like, oh, this is why I don't make any money. <laughs> Listen up, bitch. <laughs> I still reread the book because I deal with a lot of female athletes, and it's about communication. I could be the smartest dude in the world. If I can't get you to do what I want you to do, I'm useless. Mm-hmm. And so learning how to talk to people, learning how to communicate, learning how to look at body language when a team walks in the door, don't worry about what's on the board as the workout. It's 6 a.m. The football team had practice till 8 o'clock last night. They should walk through the door tired and quiet. If they don't and they're energetic, like, oh, okay, we can, we can get after it a little bit today. Or, you know, <clears throat> these kids look like they haven't slept. Well, it's Thursday. It's Friday morning. It was Thursday night. Thursday's a big party <laughs> night. These kids are hungover. Hey, intern, turn up the heat a little bit. I'm going to change the workout a little bit because I don't want to run them into the ground, but I'm going to make them suffer a little bit. Turn the heat up to like 85 or whatever. Is and it's it's understanding that it's not about the sets and the reps and the exercises and the order and the da 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 and all that. It's about reading people. Understanding team culture, developing personal relationships, yeah, understanding individuals, and then getting them to do what you want them to do. I mean, if, if if we took this even further but, with what you do, you spent all that time when I first started with man, I can't remember her name. You always had like a phone conference with her. Yeah, yeah, my Is that, business yeah, advisor. Can, what was her name? Do you remember? Oh man, no, Beth. I should. But I remember she'd call up, yeah. and I'm always excited when I would get the phone, and like I answered, like, "What EFS? Go fuck yourself!" Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, ah, it's like well, I really David. showing the <laughs> systems are really working here. <laughs> Listen up. Yeah, uh, but whatever. And so, while you know, obviously there are some systems, and there's some yeah. black and white. Essentially, what you're doing is is building relationships in one yes. way or another, yeah. whether it's on the internet or with the people here. And I, I remember one time you told me. I learned a lot from you, Dave. Uh, You were upset with yourself because you didn't know some of the people that worked in the warehouse. Yeah. And you're like, I fucked up, man. You know, Mm -hmm. and you're probably going through some shit at the time. But like, I remember like, you know, and I was like, that always stuck with me. I'm like, man, it's important that that we know. It's this. And you were, you know, I'm not saying, you know, everyone's fucking backstory, but. You need to know who they are, you know? And uh, I think that's important. That's why, you know, even when we talk about coaching kids, we got kids like my my wife now helps. Did I tell you this? My wife now works with the junior high kids at the no, school. Yeah, no, we, that's we, cool. Yeah, we have a complete fucking family. We have a feeder system now going into the yeah, to the, and it's awesome. She ever sees works with my kid just well. He's not in junior high actually. Well, it, this is all for the football team. Right. So, but well, we have either way. If, she, if either yeah. of you two ever see my kid, smack him in the fucking head. <laughs> Sorry, you're t- he deserves oh, it. Yeah, as I put on the brass knuckles. Yeah. You're yeah. badass for this. <laughs> yeah, I'll guarantee he fucking deserves it. <laughs> fucking nut punch. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, but it's been in a tremendous help, but I'm, we won't get into that. But yeah. uh, but we have these kids now, and I'd want to treat them, I don't want to say like adults, but you want to treat them with respect. Yep. You uh, just want them to know but, that you care. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, and there, there's, we got a kid on the team who's, we got a bunch of them. Struggle, and he's not very athletic. Am I saying not athletic? <clears throat> Struggles tie in velcro When you shoes. had the worst heart issue, you were faster, stronger, and better shaped. Mm-hmm. Than yeah, yeah. And but I see him doing something right, and you know, like, what the man, little I call his name. That is fucking great. Holy yep. shit, you're yep. blowing fucking balls. Look at you, and he's yeah. And, and it's like, wow, well, you know, he knows my name and and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And uh, on the flip side. <laughs> You got to show up every day before I know your name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I learned that a long time ago. Yeah, but anyway, I, th- I think. But, I, from but that, to talk about relationships, that's what it is. Yeah. I, I remember that was a huge thing for me. It always stuck with me, mm-hmm. and uh, with you know, and you admitted it, man. I, that's awesome. Yeah. You could have been easy, like, well, what the, you know, who, the, you know, I don't need to know. Yeah, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, if you think of the whole process, right? People 
make a decision of where they're going to buy their product from. So, and there's competitors. We have competitors. Yes. They can buy their product yes. from other people. You know, when they buy their product through us, you know, they know that the revenue is going back to education that's going to go help coach and teach other people online you know so a lot of the coaches that have come up through have learned because it's been 21 years now yeah you know they learn from a lot of the information that's online so now they're purchasing and supporting elite fts so they can help coaches in the future yeah learn from that process and when you have employees that are all in-house but your core business is all online they don't see the customers. They don't see yeah. that during the holidays when somebody's buying a gift for somebody, that that gift, when it's under the tree or however it's given, that's the only gift that person really cares <laughs> about getting, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're putting it in the box. You know what I'm saying? They're yep. shipping it to the person that's going to give it to them. You know, that's got value that you yes. want to try to get through to those people because that job has a lot of power, a lot of meaning because mm -hmm. you're shipping the best thing they're going to get for the holidays. <laughs> that's you know, that's good, fucking yeah. cool, you know, yeah. or they can just think oh, I'm just out here, you know, packing and shipping shit. Yeah. But from the internship standpoint, I think buddy said something that a lot of people just kind of overlooked and it was, he was quoting somebody else, but he said period of, the person was telling him that periodization is completely overrated and useless. That you just basically have to know where you are, where you're going, and how to get there, and then how to communicate it. <laughs> That's it. You know, and when he said that, I'm like, wow, that really makes sense because you alter and change a program so, so much, much. Never for an athlete the program all the way through. That it's 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 it really isn't. It's kind of periodized, kind of. It's a plan. It's a plan, but yeah. the plan is where, here's where you are, here's where you want to go, yeah. and here's the how you're going to get there, and then pay attention. Yes. You know, pay attention, yep. or you can't make those changes. Yep. If it's just a program, good fucking luck. Yep. You know, give it out. There you go. I mean, that's yep. why it's, he has a forum for the 531. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's to it's, help people. It's one of the things pivot. I do. I tell my GAs now, and, and I, each week I have a, a sheet that has the three workouts on it. And I have a spot at the bottom that says notes. Every workout I'll take notes. This went well. This was too heavy. This was this. This is this. And, and he came up to me. He's like, what, what are you doing, coach? I'm like, I take notes on all the workouts. And this was like week nine of the winter program. So I took out all the, the nine sheets, and it's just scribbles everywhere. So now when I go write a program. A bunch of dicks on there. I do, on the back, <laughs> on the back. But now I know, like, because I'm not going to remember what happened eight weeks ago. Yeah. I take notes, and we started getting hamstring issues, whatever, week four, week five. Well, what did I do week one, week two, week three? What was our running? What were we doing? Yeah. Did we, and so I've got all, I, all the information is there. Write it down. Take notes. You know, for an intern, get all the workouts from the coach. Right? You know, take notes with it. What did you see? You know, what did I see? What is this? Talk to the coach about it. I, I think most head coaches, I love talking about it because I wrote it. Of course I want to talk about my program. Yeah. You know, so I want to talk about this stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, why would you not? <laughs> yeah. You know, so like there's... there's is this going to be about me? It's, I don't <laughs> you know, yeah, right? You yeah. know what it is, is, is I think, and I noticed this with one of my guys who I, I really like him. He drives me insane. <clears throat> He'll ask me a question. I'll answer it. He's not listening. He's just waiting to talk. Yeah. I don't care what you have you know to what? say. You know who's the I'm king not, of that? And Dave actually admitted to it. He's like, hey, how's your bench? And I remember saying, Dave, just tell me about your bench workout. Yeah. <laughs> Dave would call me up. He's like, hey, how's your bench? I'm like, just tell me what you did, yeah. dude. You know who's better at that than it was fucking Bob. Oh, yeah? Bob Young hey, was uh, the man. Hey, you have a squat workout yeah, so, today? Uh, how's yeah. everything going, man? It's like, yeah. okay, so what'd you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But it's like, dude, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah. You asked me a question. I have no interest. If I'm interested... I'll ask you. Yeah, I'll be the. You know, uh, and he got mad at me one day. He's like, "You never ask my, you never listen to my opinion." I'm like, "Cause I don't care." <laughs> when I care, if you notice, I go, "Hey, what do you guys think about this? Yeah. What do you think about this?" Otherwise, I don't care. What am I gonna? Are there things I can learn from 25 year old kids? Absolutely, because they like all this fancy nonsense. The, you know, I'm. But if I've got it, you know, I don't care what your opinion is. So, as a young coach. Just listen, watch, pay attention to things. 
try to figure out why Rhodes does his his warm up the way he does. Why does he set up the progression the way he does? It's just Jim's progression, by the way. Um, but why do I do it? Try to figure out why. Don't talk. You know, I, I remember a guy saying, you know, you got one of these and two of these. Yeah. These are ears. Yeah. For a reason. Oh, headphones. Yeah. You got one of these and two I thought, of these. I thought that was a cum stain. No. Yeah. Oh. Right you know. On the fucking side of the head. <laughs> Great he, story. He's a dodger. Great oh, story. No. Side of the head, let me tell you. So, this, the last, the last winter workout of, uh of the season, the rest running workout, we got like eight inches of snow. And I had lost two GAs, they got jobs. So it's me and and one other kid. And I'm like, all right, dude, go set up the bag drill. Same as last week, just two of them. He he couldn't he couldn't get that done. <laughs> so literally you put four bags down, you put a cone five yards away, you put a cone five yards away, do that twice. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> so I set up eight drills. I, I, I shoveled eight inches of snow off of the football field for each drill. So I'm freaking heated. The football coaches start moseying on oh, out yeah. with, their coffee, with their coffee. And oh. they're laughing. And I'm freaking oh. heated. I'm sweating. I'm swearing. I think my heart's going to explode. I'm like, I'm going to die on Friday morning. That's when my heart's going to explode. <laughs> Not in the gym. I'm, I, and all of a sudden, bam, side of the head, snowball. Oh. Uh. Oh, our quarterback's coach was – he's actually from uh, Ohio. Uh, I thought it was the intern. Cole, no, Cole Stout <laughs> is uh, – he was a quarterback in between Taj Boyd and Deshaun Watson at Clemson. He's in the stadium 45 yards away from me. <laughs> he throws a fade ball <laughs> that hits me right in the side of the head. I snapped. <laughs> I had a broom in my hand. I looked at him, and I'm like, not today. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> So I just threw the broom <laughs> across the football field, and I started storming somewhere. So this was not like a Caddyshack moment. No. <laughs> I, I snapped because I had built this up in my head. An intern doesn't know how to set up a freaking bad yeah. drill that we did. In, 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 in. And I started storming, and I'm like, well, I started. I, I got to finish this, so I got to walk all the way to the weight room. And on the way, he the, the, the intern had brought out some uh, – those little hurdles you jump over yeah, that yeah. we don't need, by the way. We didn't yeah. need that day, but they were out there. So there were 18 of them. A couple barbells. I picked up every single one of them and just threw them. <laughs> and I stormed into the weight room, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to have to explain this. Had a couple, you know, sip of coffee, and I walked back out. I'm like, hey, guys, beautiful day. <laughs> Sun's out. I always tell them the lights. Yeah, lights. It's yeah. electric sunlight. <laughs> Welcome to electric sunlight. It's a beautiful day. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, side note. Interns, listen, watch, don't talk. You can learn so much if you shut up and listen and watch. It's unreal. And ask a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't ask a dumb question like, uh, how come we squat first? Pay attention <laughs> to the workout for a couple weeks. Try to figure it out yourself. Then you can ask an intelligent question. You know, it, it, I think a lot of kids don't do that. They just want to tell you what they think. Yeah. I don't care. I'm yeah. not. It'd be like me going into wet side and going, Lou's going, are oh, you going to squat, you know, you're going to dynamic effort squat today with a green band and a blue band and 225. And well, but you know, Lou, what, uh, what I read about was <laughs> get out. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Who, who am I? You know, it, and that's what these kids do nowadays. It's unreal. Unbelievable. Oh, it's unreal. Oh, anyways. I don't know why this reminded me of <laughs> this, but one of the most impressive things I ever saw was we were at dinner probably at Murph's somewhere <laughs> and it was a group of us and you were there oh, no. and you damn near quoted the whole fucking movie at Caddyshack. Oh, that, yeah. The whole uh, yeah. fucking movie. Yeah, it's bad. It I have was a, unbelievable. I have a weird memory for stuff that really interests me. Like, I just, if it's funny, it makes me laugh. Because it was funny as fuck at the time because <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why in the fuck did he remember every... I, it's just if, if something interests me or something catches my eye, I'm, I commit it to memory. You Plus, still remember that shit? Yeah, I remember a lot of that movie. Oh, my God. And Bill, Bill, okay, Bill, Bill Murray. Bill Murray smoking the uh, Kentucky but, blue. You got to get started. Me what's but, great what's about this, this is uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hybrid. It's a California sets me in a Kentucky bluegrass. Yes. The great thing about this is you can 
play 36 <laughs> on it in the afternoon and you go home and get stoned to the bejesus <laughs> belt that night. I got pounds of the stuff. <laughs> I met Bill Murray. He's as funny in person. Because I felt like Woody Harrelson in Zombieland. Bill fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I was at Rhode Island. One of the assistant coaches was his kid. So he would come to games all the time. And I remember, I know a, a couple celebrities, I guess you want to call them. And when I saw Bill Murray, I felt like Woody Harrelson in Zombieland. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Bill Murray. Oh, my God. It was, it, and I'm like, pleasure to meet you. You know, I didn't want to be like, yeah, totally. It was, he was super cool. He's super quiet. But I was like, oh, my God, it's Bill fucking Murray. Anyways. But, yeah, if I enjoy something, I will obsess over it. I will learn it. And now, because I'm old, and there's kids that haven't seen Caddyshack. So I can quote something. You sound, and people, you sound like it sounds smart. People yeah. think My I'm God. funny. I always, I always, <laughs> they think it's you, yes. like original. Yes. That is some good stuff, yes. Rhodes. Yeah, Holy but, shit, but, you're funny as fuck. Like when, when kids will be yapping away, I'll be like, hey, that's a beautiful story. Tell Reader's Digest. Yeah. That's from Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, Reader's Digest. And I'm not, my like, grandma has that. I'm not going to tell you it's from a movie. Yeah. You're going to think I made that up. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, because you know all those old movies, there's some great stuff. <laughs> So I use all kinds of lines on kids, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but what's the one you use the most? That, that's one I use a yeah. lot. That's one I use a lot. Beautiful story. Tell Reader's Digest. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities, uh, have you ever been mistaken for Stone Cold Steve Austin? <laughs> uh, Stone Cold and Goldberg. When I, when I lived in Connecticut, I lived like 15 minutes away from WWE. And I remember oh, I was out. right there, yeah. Yeah, I was out at a bar one night, and... Uh, this dude was like, Stone Cold. I'm like, dude, no. Stone Cold's like 5'9", like 220 or something like that. I'm 6'4", like 300 pounds. I He's like, it. no, you're Stone Cold. I'm like, I'm not. And he wouldn't listen to me. So finally, I'm like, well, I hell yeah, or whatever Stone Cold. He's like, I knew it. I'm like, dude, okay. I got to tell you this. This is, this is my celebrity story. Uh, my wife and I are eating lunch somewhere. I don't know where it was. And I'm just sitting down in this couple, like, I don't know, probably in the mid fifties or something. This was 10 years ago, probably. And they lean in and like, man, I'm a huge fan of, you know, and I was like, you know, it's definitely not who they, you know, and they're like, yeah, you're Zach Brown, right? He's a country, <laughs> country music yeah. guy. And I have no idea. Uh, and I don't even, I didn't, they didn't say Zach Brown, the country music guy. They just thought, I'm like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, huh? Yeah. And she's like, no, seriously, you're Zach Brown, right? I'm like, I'm not Zach Brown. So I'm eating, and then I went up to go to the bathroom, and they're like, <laughs> went to Julie. I was like, can you get Zach to sign something for me? <laughs> oh, my God. And Julie's like, I don't know what to tell you, people. Like, uh, like, like, you know, he's not Zach. I don't know. She's like, we should have just fucking took a Signed picture it, with yeah. my hands on her tits. Yeah. Like, fucking Zach yeah. Brown's a perv. <laughs> do the um, do, do your kids at school know that you're a celebrity? online <laughs> yeah, do they like follow your instagram and shit uh some of them do i think i don't know uh i don't know you know the funny thing is is when i was first introduced to the team uh kyle would be like you know this is jim wendler he uh played football and all this other stuff so it, it kind of gives you some street cred you know yeah and then uh so i was it was probably about three months in and one of the kids <clears throat> was like you have like forty five thousand well, they're gonna on, search, yeah. On Insta, that was it. Wasn't anything to do with what I've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that I had all these followers yeah. on whatever. Yeah. I, I guess it was Instagram, and I was like, really? That's what you're most impressed? Yeah, with? yeah. Not all this other and, uh, yeah. I mean, the kids, they don't like. They'll go to tournaments. Like the wrestling team will go to tournaments, and like they'll get asked questions. You know, like, is it really like I've been doing this program? Do you know who Jim Wendler is? Like, yeah, he's my coach. Like, what? Well, because yeah. our wrestling kids, as you, the kids who play football, are fucking tossing dudes now. Yeah, I mean they're incredibly strong. So, I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. I've I've known those kids for so long, so I don't think they really give a shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. But they bust my balls a little bit here and there. Yeah, which I love because I'm like yeah. good, you know. Yeah, I, I've had I had a I had a, a baseball player come in, and uh, he's like, "Dude, you squatter a grand." I'm like, how do you know about this? <laughs> I found it on YouTube. I'm like, how'd you find it on YouTube? Dave spelt my last name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> For years. And he still found it. For and fucking I'm like, years. And, yeah, and I'm like, 
Oh my God! What else would you spell found? like R O H R H R H? I still got to look it up. My dad, yeah. Oh, okay. It's, I'm like the scholar. Like row ads. Yeah. Yeah, row ads. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah. Maybe you should listen to me when I tell you what to do, huh? <laughs> yeah. There you go. I still warm up with your Max. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about the movie Black Sheep. Row ads. Row ad, Yeah. You know how fast you were going? Sixty-five. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> seven. Sixty. Sixty-five. So seven miles an hour. Huh? They're all stoned. Yeah. <laughs> they thought they were going. It was yeah. good. All right. No. Great movie. <laughs> Were you with me? That that reminds me. Were you with me when we went down to Bob's for whatever reason? And it was like the fifth time I ever got high in my life. (laughs) Was that you? Bob had to meet the next day, right? Why did we go down there? Was it like I I could not? Probably not to be home. I don't know if it was a seminar, but we were there for some fucking reason. Why did I think Bob had to meet the next day? Because I don't remember seeing Bob lift. See, you don't remember why we were there either. (laughs) We we didn't just make casual trips. No, no, no. Uh, On the corporate jet. No, no, no. (laughs) You, that was a different time. There was one time where we went down there and we were sitting in Bob's house. He's like, you guys want to get high? And we're like, he had something to do the next day. There was, I don't know what it was. I think it might have been a meet. I'm like, Bob, you, you know, <clears throat> I had no idea he got, you know. Yeah, I didn't either. And I was like, is sure you want to do that? Are you used to it? And he's like, no, I'm fine. I'm like, all right. But, yeah, I, I don't <clears> – <throat> We, I can't even tell you. I remember going down there a bunch of times, but half the time – I remember we went for, like, a meeting. We did, like, I a don't meeting. know what the fuck remember it was. We were, all I remember is I spend high, like – Three, four times my life, right? <laughs> Two of this thing. wasn't even fucking high. This was like a whole nether level of <laughs> fucked up. Where we went to get ice cream. Yeah. And yes, everybody was ordering there. Ordering ice cream. And no, 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 so, no. Oh, you were you didn't know what to do. I'm so confused because it was I, like, um, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. fuck was that place? It was. It no, didn't work right. It no. wasn't how it was supposed to I be. I think what happened was, and I don't know if I'm getting this right. I was there. Yes. I think I ordered for you. I think so because it was he like was so co- <laughs> fucking confused. I just give him some chocolate and waffle cones. Sprinkles. Yeah, I, I, it was like um, yeah, you were standing there. Like, Cold Stone Creamery is what it was. Yeah, yeah. Because I've never been to it. It was like fucking not right. Well, there's <laughs> there's too many options for way a stone too many. Man. Op- yeah, 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 like, yeah. And I still don't know how it was all paid for. Yeah, we're just sitting just, down well, eating it. If you walk out, no one questions you. Like, well, yeah, I, I don't think we paid. No, I remember that now. <laughs> yes, it was the ice cream thing. Yeah, I have Dave. I couldn't even tell you why we were there. That's because whatever he fucking made us smoke wasn't weed. Yeah. It was. Fucked up. It was up. that Kentucky Bluegrass, <laughs> California sense. California sense. Exactly. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's <laughs> what it was. I mean, it's it was uh, fucked up. And it, uh, the whole time going back, I'm like, how is he driving? You know, Bob. Just keep the yellow line on your left. He was like, all the, it was like <laughs> completely used. And paper mache was there. This is because I was yeah. thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, what the he fuck? Was, uh, it, this this shit cre- gave me brain damage. I uh, I can't remember th- that and the ammonia out of the uh, flashlight. Yeah, the flashlight. <laughs> I man, the f- I remember the ice cream story. God, I don't remember a lot, do I? That's I would have never remembered that, and I just remember ordering for you. <laughs> See, yeah, that's was. a fucking friend. I should have like, dude, fuck. I should standing that, that shit there. In that thing. <laughs> I mean, Put everybody else is ordering. Put sprinkles on it, though. I'm just standing there, and I can't fucking... And I'm like, all I wanted to say is whatever he had. But the person who ordered before me wasn't there because it didn't work like a normal fucking line. Yep. So I had a plan, right? Like, if you go to McDonald's... It's and like training. Up, yes. You have a plan. Sometimes like, you got to go off the plan. He didn't it's know like, how to get there, though. I'm yeah. Ju- yeah, I was just going to say whatever he has. And that make it very fucking easy. But it didn't work out that way, and I was so fucking confused. <laughs> And Jim bailed me out with, I, I don't even know what the fuck it was I, I ate. I, I, it was, I, I think we were there for a seminar. It, That's got to be a seminar. Yeah, how fucking smart were we to smoke some fucking heroin or whatever it was <laughs> the day before a seminar? I'm sure that seminar went well. Oh, man. Nobody used a box that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, All that's right, fantastic. question number five. Ooh, we're on the five. <clears throat> Out of 120 something. Wow. Do Jim and Matt have any funny meat stories, bomb out, shit going wrong, blown out suits, etc.? Tell us a story about your meat roads. Mm, very <laughs> uninspiring. No, your meat meat. Oh, the lifting? No, your cock meat. It's uninspiring. 
He answered right the first time. Uh, Rhodes is all balls and head. No <laughs> shaft. <laughs> Tuna can. Uh, I have so none. Uh, none of my good stories have come from meats. I yeah, don't I, don't, I don't know that. There, like, there's a couple funny things, but it's always the training. Yeah. Is where it was really fun. And then, like, going to eat after or something like that. I... I bomb. I mean, I bombed because I sucked, and I thought I could lift more than I really could. That's my own fault. I did that a bunch of times. Do people but... still bomb out of raw meats? No, you can't bomb out anymore. They'll let you continue. Well, I'm saying, but do yeah, pe- we gotta, do gotta people win a miss? Do people yeah. miss opening squats? Oh yeah. Holy shit! Right. To me, that's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Because at least with gear stuff, like something's gonna go fucking wrong on your suit, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Wow. I, I. Boy, that's just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you talk about turd planning. Yeah. yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're probably I, all coaches, though, right? I, yeah, I made it up to three fifteen. I yeah. made it up to three fifteen in training. I'm going to open yeah. at four. Sounds oh. sounds solid. What, you going to put knee wraps on? <laughs> yep. All right. Have at it. Yeah, I don't. It's not the meets that I remember. It's kind of like football. I, I remember the practices. I remember the. Remember when coach got mad at us and we did up downs for fifteen minutes? Like that's the stuff I, I remember. Always we remember. did two hundred and twenty five up downs, something like that. Two twenty. I don't think you were there, Rhodes. There was a spring when we did up-downs no, for this, three periods. This was on a Sunday after, uh, the, after a game. Oh, uh, no. I, won't. See, I, I remember, remember when one. I remember when he squatted a crayon because all he, all he went – the only reason he got into – if people don't know the story, the only reason he got into powerlifting was to squat a squatted grand. Yeah. Yep. That was it. And he did it. And, and he so he, he squatted powerlifting, and the first thing he said to me is, well, that's it. <laughs> yep. And I'm like – at the time, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> You know, and then you know the next day or whatever he says, I'm I'm done. You yeah, know, I'm I'm moving on. Yeah. And then I had to be the bearer of bad news, you know, and go into West Side and say, Well, Jim's not coming back. Yeah, you know, he squatted a grand. That's all he wanted to do, and that didn't go over real well. But well, here's the um, thing: is uh, if you don't have that, that you're just wandering around aimlessly. Yeah, and my heart yeah. wasn't. You know, yeah. I'm like, because <clears throat> you know what? They weren't pissed about it for maybe they were pissed about it for about a week. And oh, that, that shit really gets over. It. it does. No one cares. Yeah. Well, I think that, well, some of the people that got kicked out, it shit stretched out for years. Yeah. Like, remember that motherfucker? You know, this was, I think there was a certain degree of respect. Like, holy shit. I wish I could just set a number and do it and yeah. just quit. AJ did the same thing with the 1,200. Oh, yeah. He squatted 1,200 and that's it. You know, but he had to almost kill himself. Well, yeah. you, you had to almost kill yourself, too. That's the, <clears throat> I remember, uh, who was that big? baseball player for the Red Sox, David Ortiz. Yeah. He had such bad, like, plantar fasciitis and and, and a bunch of other problems. And they asked him why he was retiring because he was still at the top of his Mm – he was doing very well, maybe at the top of his game. And he's like, I just don't – I'm not willing to do the things I need to do to get – because it took him, like, four hours to get ready for a game. Oh, yeah, I bet. And when you're – at a certain point, you're like, I'll fucking do whatever. And Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I'm not willing to do this. Like, to – to squat 1100 because there's no real number between a thousand no you know what i'm saying yeah. like uh 1025 yeah I mean, it just, it, whatever so i'm like i'm not willing to eat i'm not willing to to do all this stuff that yeah. i and push and, and then, i don't know yep. and the thing I think was matt kind of touched on it earlier i think everybody i i hate to make big assumptions but i think everybody needs to find something like that where they push themselves mentally physically without a doubt you know gaining weight is a great analogy because you're you're actually out of your comfort zone Very because i mean so, you yeah. eat so much you're <laughs> you're in a quadruped on your bed just yeah. open your stomach will stretch out so yeah. the food will digest yeah, you know when you try to get up in the morning if you don't rock properly you'll rock yourself You're right just, back to yeah, sleep it's all funny man but it, <laughs> i fell and, asleep trying to get out of bed yeah we <laughs> make jokes about it but it's just fucking miserable yeah, yeah. and the day that it becomes not miserable is probably a really sad day for your health Ugh. Because yeah. then yeah, it's then probably we, never coming. Yeah. You're, you're done. Yep. Yep. You know, you're just yep. going to be 350 your whole fucking yep. life. It's, you know, it's what are you willing to do? Yeah. And then at a certain point, uh, I think you guys talked about it on your last podcast, all in mm-hmm. kind of thing. It's like you do what you got to do and then you reach your goal or you just, you, it's just not fun anymore. Like Vincent, he's not mad what? at me, but like I got close to 500 pound raw bench. I benched 485. And I just, I lost the desire. My hip was really bad. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of lost the desire to, to chase after it. And I kind of wish I had got it, but I, I'm all right with it. I don't, I didn't do it. So I what? can say this from people but, that I've seen over the years, that once you really lose it, 
you're not getting it no. back. Right. I'm not willing to do I'm not willing to hurt like we used yeah. to hurt. I'm not willing to I don't have the courage to get under a bar. Yeah. If I had the physical ability, I don't have the mental ability, the courage My to dad asked me that one time. Get he under said, it. do you think you could go back now no to way. Arizona knowing what you know now and still you know, walk on. I'm like, I'm not in that mindset anymore. No. I, I just uh, imagine this. Imagine if you're back in high school with your brain and teachers telling you what matters and what doesn't matter. Like, yeah. that's a dangerous thing. Cause I would tell, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm like, nothing here fucking matters. Mm -hmm. And it does not saying it doesn't, but when you look at it with like a skewed worldview, cause it does matter, mm -hmm. you know, all the studying and all that, you know, whether or not it but, really applies, it's always a next step that you're going to take. But that's, I always, like, I would be horrible. I would get kicked out. I'm like, yeah. the only thing I need to do is typing. Like, teach me how to type. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think the worst thing you can do, Jim kind of touched on a little bit, is hang on longer. Like, if it's yes. powerlifting, hang on longer than you should. And I think I did. You know? And because your total is not going to go up. You might think that it is. And maybe the sun might rise yeah, just a certain way, a yeah. certain day. And it might, because you're like, well, my three best lifts together just, you know, it's just, it's just, yep. just wear and tear. And I'm in a position now where I can see where that's starting to happen to other people. Then I'll tell them and it does still doesn't matter. Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah it's yeah. not going to, you got to come to, you know, they're, they're locked in. It's really hard yep. for them to come to that. Yep. And then, you know, like I, like I was saying before you find something else I found, yeah. I found playing the guitar. That was like the, one of the things I yes. did to get, you know, and then I, I actually got into coaching right as I was like, I got to stop powerlifting. And yeah. so that really consumed me and I dove into that and I paid no attention to my training. Now, five or six years, 11, seven years later, like I'm paying attention to my training again, not like I used to, but I've learned how to focus on my job, have a little bit of focus on my training, have a little bit of focus on playing the guitar. I love to shoot guns. Uh, you don't have to focus on that. You just yeah. point the damn thing down range right. and squeeze. <laughs> But like, there's now, one thing you don't need focus on. That's around a loaded yeah, firearm. Yeah. <laughs> my, my dad taught me how to shoot when I was a kid. He was a yeah. marine, you know. So like, a gun in my hand is like like a, this. It's yeah. I'm very comfortable with it. It's not like I carry around one all the time. But it's like, ah, eh, it's just a gun. I know which way the the business end is, and you keep that pointed away from people or myself. Yeah. Um. But now, like, I I don't have the same kind of focus that I did when I say power lifted, where it consumed me. But coaching kind of consumes me in a way, but it's, it's much healthier. Yeah. Because when I leave work, I don't take work home. And so I'm in a, when I'm at work, I'm, I'm about being a strength coach. When I'm at home, I'm about learning how to play the guitar. I read a lot more than I used to. I, I do different things, and I have different focuses, and it's much healthier. And you know, what's very interesting is all three of us have had lifting taken away. Yeah. Yeah. In some way. And... Uh, I love my time in the weight room, and it's not the same kind of love that I had. When I was in high school and college, it was different. Because <clears throat> to me, football is always the best thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And I liked, loved lifting. I always thought I loved lifting more than I loved football until I started coaching. I realized that all that lifting just made me love. It was, you know, I loved training. I really do. But there's something about being playing football that's mm -hmm. just unparalleled. Yeah. But I think when, to make, whatever, that has neither here nor there. But we've all had shit taken away from us. And so that time in the weight room, like, I fucking love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I train by myself, and I love it. Like, I, I open up my garage door, and, I'm, and I, I don't <clears throat> roads Occasionally, I'll just start yelling whatever random shit just because I think I start laughing. I'm mm -hmm. squatting and be like, here it comes, Satan! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah or something dumb, and my wife opens the door. She's just dying. She's like, you're such a fucking idiot. Yeah. And there's people walking by, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, going to yeah. shit on you. <laughs> Everyone's gonna fucking do it. But it's just, funny, like, and I'm like, I'm, and it's it's something I, I I had taken away from me, and you had it taken away in you, and mm -hmm. so even though it might not have the same consequence in your life, it's still fucking awesome. Yeah. It, oh, it's still it, yeah. yeah. If my doctor's listening, I don't lift anymore. That's right. Yeah. The um, where, <laughs> where I fucked up is because it was my identity so so strong. Is you found the guitar, I found being a fake bodybuilder. <laughs> right and jim can attest to this i mean during i was Woo! worse i was way worse being a fake bodybuilder than i ever was being a power lifter as really? far as my relationships really i almost yeah. got divorced oh, i wow. almost lost everything 
bodybuilding you know, that time is a 24 7 it kid. consumed me and it was my distraction from not being yeah, able to power lift, lift. Yeah. cuz i wasn't willing to deal to, with the fact that i couldn't do couldn't, that yeah, yeah, yeah. and it still took years after that and a lot of a lot of hardship yeah. and a lot of mistakes before i really started to deal with that yeah um, i don't think i think you're going to find that more with like football players and yes. you know other athletes how do you, and, how do you define yourself after what i've done for my whole life what yeah is, i mean that was it it's i had 25 years or whatever yeah. most most powerlifters got three years. So I'm going to sit here. Especially you know, nowadays. They, they're not going to tell me I had an identity crisis when I retired from my three-year hobby. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. no, you didn't. No. You know, I can tell you what one is. You know, you yeah. lose all your friends. Yeah. You lose, you know, everything. Yeah. Well, like yeah. when I powerlifted, I missed out on relationships. I missed out on, you know, yeah. going out to the club. I don't, I don't necessarily regret it, but, like, I was so focused on what I was doing that I didn't explore anything else and that's okay though yeah. i think i think everybody needs to do that the only thing that i think they need to realize and where where i had a little bit of a misconception looking back is i never sacrificed anything right everything i did was by choice, choice right right my wife sacrificed <laughs> everything right because right, she yeah, had to right. deal with me she had to deal with all the other kind of stuff so yeah it drives me nuts when people say i'm sacrificing this i'm sacrificing that no. i'm like no you're not motherfucker Sacri you're making a choice. you live you're making with a, choice. a sacrifice would be them not lifting and having to go take a second job yes it's whoever you're living with yeah. is, is the one that's actually yeah. sacrificing because you're not fucking there yeah Yep. You know, mentally yep. or spiritually yep. or however you want to define yep. it. Let's hit question six. Six. <clears throat> How long have we been doing this? I don't know. Uh, two hours and 40 minutes. Holy right. oh, awesome. shit. Those. Well, we're going to break a record. We'll go 20 more minutes. All right. Uh, that wouldn't be breaking a record for us. But time for <laughs> the last question then. All right. Hey, let's we get, get, let's get the ephedrine out so we can go. go <laughs> what's the record? More Give me the extends, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah, the, well, we got the, some extends. To what's, the, on. what's the record and who was it with? Five will kill uh, you. It was five hours and four what? minutes. No, what? What? I'm just kidding. It was uh, like around three and a half. I think Wendler last time. Oh, oh really? Well, yeah, we got on some good. Yeah, long yeah, yeah. I got a good one here, though. So this is, um, I'll pull it up for you guys in a second. But it says, talk about the old elite video that Jim took at TPS. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, put the video oh, up. This is good. This is video. funny as fuck. Why did that day come about slash brought all you uh, plus Vincent together? And what did Dave, a.k.a. Yoda, say to Matt at the end of the video? All right, I pop do, the video I up. So I, I, I have video. no idea what oh, Dave know. said to you'll me, know. but it's about squatting or something like that. It's funny because I watched yeah. it earlier when they said this. It won't be on the live when we post it, but when he actually posts it yeah, for you, real. I don't know where the cursor is right there. The cursor is right under the YouTube logo. Josh, I got to say your backside in the video is fantastic. Mm, look at that lat development. Yes. Oh, oh my god, look at me. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, go all the way to the Dave. beginning. Go to the beginning. Oh, this was funny. We'll, we'll be able to hear it. Oh, this is funny. Vincent looked beautiful. Yeah, I don't know why again, I don't know why we were there. Look at how beautiful Vincent looks. I know he's fucking awesome. <laughs> So this is, you know, we're. I think we're there for a seminar. A right? seminar. We're already. I mean, we're just starting training. Is, we're already giving each other shit. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, this is the night before the seminar. Well, we have to be benching because Vincent's there. Yes. Yeah. This is what he benches like seven hundred. Because he's certainly with his shirt not squatting. that that's like in Murph's basement, right? No, this was the. Uh, now, I don't know if it's the original, but this was Murph's. It's one of the. One, it's like the uh, second one. Look at Vincent. Beautiful. Somebody needs to show him. I'm going to send this to him. Oh, just so he can see how awesome that he used to look. That looks way better than he does now. Look at his forearms. Yeah. And he's, and he's only like 300 pounds here. And notice, 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 notice the yeah. wrist wraps. Yes. They're not wrist wraps because we used to cut knee wraps, knee wraps. in half uh, yes. for wrist wraps. Like, wrist wraps didn't yes. even exist. Dave's got the bench shirt on with the sleeves cut off. The, yeah. Uh, the, jean, sh the jean jacket uh, <laughs> jean jacket look. Yep. God, I look fat. More than 20? Is that an earring? Uh, I did have it, uh, maybe. Oh, Vincent weighs 296. He's like 5'2". Imagine him at 328. <laughs> this was the winter time, by the way. Yes. And Merce Place didn't have heat. No. 
No. Oh fuck! Do you remember? I remember doing a this seminar. Is, this is like three weeks after Roadstown. You had just taken me on the site here, and Vincent had to keep his legs up because he just had his knee operated yeah. on. Yeah. Well, that's why he was down to three hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. I mean that was right. He had yeah. his knee. Yeah. Watch this yeah. speed, Dave. Boom. Look at that. There was zero. Uh, you didn't. <laughs> we used to call that off boards. Heave, heave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a training log you should never have. Uh, skull crushers. <laughs> I remember this. It's sad. Uh, <laughs> Look at his face. It's beautiful. He's lazy. There lazy we go. Eye. Yeah. When, he get, when he got fat, his lazy eye. There we go. <laughs> Look at how. Deep Look at that. that is to the fucking basement. That's roads. hamstring parallel. That's right. <laughs> what a horrible existence we used to live. So what is the, who is this? Is that Vincent? That's Vincent. That's Vincent. Yeah. Legs on chairs, yeah. folding yeah. chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that was the fattest dude. Oh, that was horrid. Oh, oh that was awesome. Oh, that's funny. Oh, this is great. See, I could never do this ever again in my life. I don't even think I could load that much weight. I think on you a bar. got hundos on there, Roach. Yeah, yeah, there are. It was a big squat. I don't. I can't. It's like nine thirty. <laughs> at the top. Yeah, at the top without without chains. Well, there's invisible chains on yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> got to have accommodating resistance. <laughs> I have no idea what you said to me there. I can't remember. Well, you, I start humping that, like like humping yeah. the air for some reason. <laughs> That's right. So what you're gonna do? I think I'm trying to teach you how to shake. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. My back. You know, was, my people back don't was realize that when point. Dave used to squat in the meets, he would take the bar off and it was like a fucking seizure. It was insanity. Then he would start descending and it would all go away. <laughs> it was the. It was like there was some kind of nerve going on. Yeah. I have no idea what you said to me. I can't remember. I don't either. Uh, you see what's the strong man But you, you see that he, he, at this point in the video, he's done three reps and he's ready to die. Yes, yes. I was incredible. I was in perfect shape for what we did. And Vincent's got like 980. Is this Vincent? Yeah. Holy shit. With his fucking feet we on the folding chairs. Let's watch him not lock out. Vincent, I hope you're lit. He doesn't lock anything out, does he? He's got bad elbows, but no. Look at that shit. Yeah, that was like seven or seven fifty or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That crazy. That's funny. That's like twelve years ago. That's some old shit right there. I is that? Yeah, one more question here. All right. That's. I thought we had a hundred. What's that? That's What's a recovery that? day. That was not a recovery day. No, this is just as a different video. This is Jim going through fucking McDonald's. <laughs> That's when they that used to have the ranch crispy chicken. Sandwich. That's what I see. So what's the what's All right, the question? So final question. You got yes, to each individually answer this. Uh -oh. Okay. It's going to be deep. Um, if you had twenty four <laughs> hours left on this earth, what would you do? I'd fucking train at Westside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that counts. You cannot take it back. No. Just Dave, you Just go kidding. first, buddy. Oh, you already went. <laughs> Oh, you, you going to come with me? Is it on yeah. the same day? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. If it's okay. on Friday. You, you want wow. it to be deep? Uh, yeah. How do we know today isn't the 24 hours? Oh, my God. Fuck. <laughs> so I suppose uh, I would do the same thing that I would do any other day. Uh, yeah. If I knew I had 24 hours left, I would probably just put a gun in my head and end it. I'm doing this. See, Dave, you're thinking about this the I'm wrong way. I'm doing it my way, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to take motherfuckers out. You yeah, got to take them out. If you're going I'm down. talking about there's a IRS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Take Fuck out em. the IRS. I like that. No, oh, I, like, I, you know, if I was really going to do this, I would uh, somehow get my uh, son here. And then I would just sit around my fucking uh, house, maybe go out to uh, Darby Creek. Yeah, yeah. And just walk around and just hold my wife's hand and uh, call my mom and dad and just sit there and fucking enjoy it. I don't, I'm not, I'm not like I'm going to go to like the Grand Canyon. Yeah. 
Dude, yeah. my, I love my fucking house. I yeah. love Darby. I love being outside at Darby Creek. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want to die next to my wife. Oh, yeah. she's, my wife's going to live forever, too. She's, like, yeah. everyone lives to be like 90 in her family. Yeah. And she's like, God, I fucking married you, you fat turd. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a <laughs> fucked up question because it's, you know, I've been in positions where I didn't think I was going to come through a surgery or whatever. And I know what I thought before I went in. Which is what? You know, well, I thought, obviously, you think about your family. You think about, yeah. you know, are they going to be okay? Are they going to be taken care of? Are things put in place to be able to, you know, all those type of things. So you, I got that little mental checklist that, you know, then when you <laughs> when you come out, it's like, okay, that one thing was not checked. I need to make sure I fix that shit. And I thought about training, you know. So, mm. you know, I, I'd i still want to train, but I don't want to be at the expense of my family, you know, with the time with them. So I'd have to figure out like a balanced life for one day, you know, so I can actually go fucking squat Dave, something. Ma- Dave, maybe you should think about this answer, you know, all the time. I fucking exactly every maybe day I should have some balance. Like, I love, I love fucking squat and heavy shit. I really fucking do. Yeah. I, miss I mean, it. I, 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 I want to stand. You know, I, I still do it now with the stupid spider bar reverse bands. You Nate, go look at my IG. You'll see. I find any way you can figure out every, how to do e- it. Every time I watch that, I still the video is over, and I'm like, "What the fuck was done?" <laughs> exactly. I, I barely move, but I, you know, you should like, throw a meat, Dave. I, that's fucking, for a uh, spider bar reverse uh, band, uh, or maybe uh, SS yoke. Maybe it's, I, I don't want to do that because it's just it's just the personal thing. Well, I didn't me. mean on your last 24 yeah. hours. I just meant in general. No, nah, I, I don't. It wouldn't be as good. It's and when it's just me and it's the several people that are out here, it's more of an internal type of thing that I would want that one more time. You know, yeah. and then after that, obviously, you know, being yep. with my family. Yeah. That's a, yep. So that would be my answer. Look at Mike. Yeah, he was beautiful. Dude, you remember that um, picture that Louis put in? Hold on one second. Yeah. Your answer is not important. I know. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Do you remember that picture? Popeyes after? <laughs> oh, we're going to fucking Popeyes, dude. Chick-fil-A's butter. Oh. You're a communist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I you, hope you, you trip and fall and yeah. knock out your two front you, teeth. You want to blow Che Guevara, you fucking. <laughs> I was going to say something. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I can't remember. Don't My uh, answer wasn't important. Yeah, no, Mike. no, no. no. picture of Mike. No, like, do you remember that Louis wrote an article about torso training? Yes. For pilot, and they had a picture of Mike with his shirt off? Yeah. Holy shit. With a fucking towel? Yeah. With, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Mike was fucking big. All right, oh. Rosie, what do you got there, buddy? Uh, I think I'd echo what you guys. Uh, my nope. mom and my sister. Yeah. I'd want to see them, and I'd want to go. Uh, <clears throat> my sister's got 18 horses. And I find you go a, fuck a horse. I don't. <laughs> I don't think my hip would allow it. Well, uh, I'm hip, talking about the, the horse the, fucking the, you. Yeah, the, oh, the well. hip. The hip is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Dude. but uh, I think you know, just down there on his last day, he's worried about his hip. You guys are awful. <laughs> <laughs> if it pops out, oh, you know what we should do? I would, yeah. I would call you up, Dave, and like, give me all your fucking, <laughs> all your fucking Norco. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> be like fuck you. I'm taking I, yeah, it all. I'm taking it all. <laughs> Wait, I just need three. You can have yeah. the rest. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, probably just you know make sure you say the things that you, we're probably not good at saying all the time. Yeah. And I know when I went into heart surgery, I the doctor's like, yeah, there's like a ten percent chance you're not going to make it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write some stuff down yeah. just in case. And I did. I got a I, 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 I got a love letter. I, <laughs> it was, it was, I've always wanted to touch, you, it was touch like, your anus. It was bad, yeah, yeah. Not just in the football locker room, but like for you real. know this. You know what this fucking dickhead did? He what? has heart surgery uh, and doesn't tell me. Yeah. You know what I fucking did? Yeah. <laughs> Drove out there and fucking Christmas. How, how did you go in? You have to have somebody there. Who was there? Uh, no one was there. I drove myself in. They, they how they do surgery on you? Yeah. I didn't. I, I don't remember why, but they did. I, I didn't. I. Hate, I don't even know if they do that with homeless people. I hate. Well. <laughs> well, they don't matter, Dave. I. I hate. Uh, <laughs> well, he matters less. <laughs> I, <laughs> these are my good friends, people. <laughs> no, um, you have to have somebody there, right? No. Mm-mm. Or is it just for the day you come home? Wait, I don't, for, yeah, someone's got to take you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah leave yeah, yeah, on yeah. your own. So yeah. what I did is, I actually saw Jim and Vincent, like the weekend before. And we did our little NOV meet. And I'm like, yeah, I got a minor little, you know, because I don't like to be a burden on people. I, it bothers me. To, I get that. I, I, you know, so I'm like, I'm going to be hooked up to an IV for four or five days. It's, I had surgery on the 21st of December. I was going to be in there through Christmas. I don't want to interrupt anyone's time. 
So I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a minor thing. I'll, I'll be fine. And then somehow I think I gave Juliet my sister's number. She's like, I just want to check in on you. I know you're going to be out, blah, blah, blah. And Juliet called my sister and she's like, oh yeah, he had blah, blah, blah. What, what, what was it? He wouldn't tell us. He's like, oh, he had open heart surgery. <laughs> I was fucking furious. I drove down the next hour. So I was, I was fucking furious. <laughs> So I remember I, I have like 20 minutes of memory, thank God, from yeah. the, the eight days I was in there. Guess who had to lift this fucking piece of shit up to take him <laughs> take a shit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if I wasn't there, I'm like, who the fuck's going to do this? Mm -hmm. But uh, I slept there. It's a fucking awesome place, man. It was nice and comfortable. to do, And they had a, for hospital food, that was every fucking three hours. I'm like, I'm going to go get something Fucking he's living his life and you don't <laughs> even want to fucking invite him along. But it was. It well, was, the best, the best part was they had, I was watching football and I'm talking to Rhodes the whole time. Like, yeah. <gasps> yeah. I'm like, dude, fuck this man. <laughs> they ran the goddamn option. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was, uh, he's I, like just clicking his, <laughs> like, I fucking remember morphine. Yes. <laughs> shut him up. I remember sitting there and, and the nurse is like, got a surprise for you. And I think it was daytime, but I had the went the curtains drawn. Yeah. And it was dark, and I, I it wasn't. It was light. It was okay. Yeah, I remember this. I wouldn't wear. Ah. I wouldn't wear the hospital robe, so I just had on a pair of shorts with a like, like a blanket over me. You like, didn't have one of these Wendler shirts. I didn't. I didn't. Those weren't made when I when I was. Well, in. to be fair, he didn't buy one. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's like, I got a surprise for you, and I don't. I just hear. I remember hearing Jim's voice, and I'm like, Oh fuck, he's gonna be mad at me because I didn't tell him. <laughs> and I have no idea what we talked about. I just remember when I would come out of my coma, I'd look over and Jim was sleeping. Football was on. I'm like, this is cool, man. Like, no. I've got good friends. And yeah. Then, you know, then, like, uh, I've he, got he good friends. He spent the next yeah. uh, week or two at my house yeah. to recover. Because what's yeah. funny is my mom, 73 years old, I'm going to take care of you. I'm like, no, mom, when I get out of the hospital, Katie, my sister, oh, this is fucking great. Is going to come take care of me because if I fall, yeah, there's nothing you're going to do about it. So Katie Ju can do it. So Katie yeah. takes care of you for a couple of days, like like a day or two. And then Juliet drives all the way, picks him up because I'm like, I don't want to stay. Like, <clears throat> Rhodes is going to be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to stay in a fucking car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's three hour drive, three down. hour there, three yeah, hour yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and yeah. so my sister ended up. She was coming on the 26th of December after Christmas. So she stayed for like five days. I had a second open heart surgery because on Christmas Eve, I was talking to my cousin who's a cardiac anesthesiologist. And he's like, dude, something's wrong with you. I don't remember this. Something's wrong with you. Put the nurse on the phone. And then the doctor comes in on Christmas Eve and is like, oh, we're going to do it again. I'm like, all right. Like that's one of the memories I have. So I had a second one. So I was in the hospital for 10 days instead of like five or six. So my sister ended up in the hospital with me kind of like Jim did. And then she was leaving on, like, January 31st. Juliet came down, picked me up, drove me to their house, and I imposed on them for, man, I don't know, 10 or 12 <laughs> days. And It was you know, awesome. We did nothing. It was my excuse. I'm like, listen, Rose no is food. here, man. I'm going to. What? No food, like SpaghettiOs. No, fuck oh, no, that, dude. We, we ate, like, like goddamn champs. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember there was one day we went, like, Juliet listened to Katie and said he's got to walk a couple times a oh. day, blah, blah, blah. So one day. Remember, Dave, it's like January 3rd mm -hmm. or 4th. In Ohio. <clears throat> and <laughs> we go for a walk. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to explain, but there's a road right by uh, in my neighborhood that the wind, you know what, the wind here is fucking mm -hmm. horrible. It's a wind tunnel. But it's a wind tunnel. And I'm, it's me, Roads. And my son, who it, was probably five, three or four. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not four. supposed to be outside in the cold. Because the cold because blast, I mean, fucking, <laughs> I mean, it was horrid. It mm -hmm. must have been 25 below with the wind chill. And I'm like, Rhodes, we got it. I picked my kid up. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I ran across the yards through the snow with my kid like a football. I'm like, dude, you got to get back home because I got <laughs> I was afraid he's going to get frostbite, yeah, man. It mm -hmm. was bad. We, we stepped <clears throat> out onto that street and it was like, Oh, this is bad. Like, I was having trouble catching my yeah. breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Jim, go. Take yeah, your kid I, I, home. I, like, I had to get him home, man. I was yeah, scared. Like, yeah. who cares? And I don't, I think I kind of followed him through the yards and whatever. But it's funny as hell. And I, I didn't tell my doctor that because he yeah. flipped. But, like, yeah, it was, it was I mean, it, it was, they took care of me. And yeah. it was, uh, 
but like I said, I don't I don't want to be a burden on anybody. I hate I it just bothers me. I'm an adult. I'll freaking take care yeah. of myself. Well, there is but a there's there's wait, a wait. huge takeaway here though because <clears throat> Jim spent a lot of time in the hospital. I spent a lot of time in the hospital. Yeah. I went down and when Bob was in the hospital with his oh, chemo, God. I went down there and that was for a long time. You if you're going in for anything, or actually I would say for anything, but any type of surgery, somebody needs to go. Because somebody needs to listen to the fucking doctors and the and nurses stand up and for take you. notes. Yeah. They need to stand up because for Because they though. fuck up. Yeah. They fuck up more than people know. Like uh. a doctor will order a test and it will never get done. Now, if you got that written down, yeah. you know, like yeah. Michelle had for Bob down in Florida, yeah. she's calling the doctor. She went to the doctor's fucking house and yeah. knocked on his door <laughs> and said, this still isn't done. Get it done. Yeah. Because a lot of times that for him, for Bob at the time, that was the difference between him dying or not. Yeah. yeah. And he was in a yeah. coma. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's, somebody has to be there just to yeah. hold. Well, yeah. It was and it's stupid. not really holding them accountable, but it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because well, as long as you're in ICU, you're kind of like not going to die. Yeah. But as soon as you go to the main floors, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to have people there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I should have known better. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember, I do, I remember a phone call with my cousin. And he's like, you need to get this, this, and this. And the nurse was standing there. I'm like, ah, da, 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 da. And she's just kind of, eh. Josh goes, put her on the phone. Yeah. And he, he gave her some <laughs> code. And he's, whatever he said, <clears throat> it happened. Yes. You know, because he's an he's a anesthesiologist. Yes. So, like, it happened. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was funny because, well, it's not funny, but it is now. So when they pulled the tubes out of me a couple days <laughs> later, I had three tubes in my stomach and one in the side. And the doctor's like, hey, you know, this it's going to hurt a little bit. But yeah, it's right. not too mm-hmm. bad. And mm-hmm. I'm like, like, how bad? And I'm like, give me some Valium or something because I'm going to freak out. I know how I am. So he pulled the first tube out. And there was like nodes attached to my heart and stuff like that. And I threatened his family. <laughs> oh, yeah. I threatened his kids. Oh, yeah. I, and then he pulled the one out of the side and I started crying. <laughs> Like sobbing, and I, I passed out. I saw the doctor that did that. Because every time I go back to my doctor, I'm like, hey, listen, I, I threatened this guy's family. I was high on Dilaudid, but, like, I kind of feel badly. And he goes, yeah, that was me. <laughs> the, I finally met him, and I go, dude, I'm so sorry. He goes, no, actually, you had good reason to. When I pulled that last tube out, your lung collapsed. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, no, you, 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 you totally had... Had had right to do it. It was totally fine. I'm like, oh god, like he was cool. Yeah, but I'm like, oh, geez. like that bothered me for two years. I, it took me two years to kind of meet him finally. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I'm yeah. like, dude, I I oh. <laughs> I was at my kid's kindergarten graduation, something like that. I don't know, but I'm just walking around and uh, the nurse that went in for my fusion. Uh, she, she wasn't really, I don't know what she was, but she worked in the doctor's office and she helped coordinate with Juliet and the, and all the insurance and doing all these different things. So she lives like a couple, uh, neighborhood over and, uh, she's like, excuse me, are you Jim Wendler? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, what's like, I, I always think I pissed someone off. <laughs> I'm the same way. And, uh, <laughs> what did I do? she's like, I'm, and I recognized her and, and, uh, she's, <clears throat> she asked me. Uh, you know how I felt and all that stuff, and I'm like, man, I feel fucking great. And she said, uh, I love my doctor because he was a guy who like understood mm-hmm. what was gonna, you know. And uh, she <clears throat> she said, like, you're the poster child. We tell everyone, like, if you want to get better, this is a guy that squatted and deadlift and did everything, and he's. I mean, I'm for the most part 100 percent pain free. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah my yeah, pain yeah. free is not everyone else's pain free. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've never, like, I feel indebted to them, like, on some weird, like, like they saved my life kind of thing. Yeah. Where, I'd, like, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I'm gonna have to kill someone for you. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. my blood oath. You yeah. Know? And I, it was such an awesome experience. Yeah. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I love my, my doctor was, you know, he was one of the few understanders. Like, uh, and I remember him coming in because I, <clears throat> you go to all these doctors and they're always selling you a bill of goods, man. And, you talk about having someone present. The thing I remember thinking is you don't have to go home with the fucking pain. You're going to go home and just hang out and do whatever yeah. as a doctor. You don't have to live with this shit. <clears throat> Cause we had so much fucking shit advice. And, uh, I had one doctor's like, you don't need surgery. It's the worst thing. He was a pain management doctor. 
Yeah. Yeah. He just yeah. wanted me as a fucking, you know, yeah. to yep. get me hooked. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, but he set my diet. I mean, he was very upfront, you know, and he, you know how nice that is? Think about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know. Just, yeah. hey, like, this is the deal. He's like, you can do this. We're going to try this, but, you know, uh, and, uh, but he, <clears throat> when he came in after the original, he looked at the MRIs and stuff. He goes, you are one t- tough motherfucker. And I was like, what? He's like, I have never seen so much damage if someone still be able to walk. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it is horrid. And uh, he's like, you look like a 75-year-old man who's done nothing but manual labor. And I'm like, thank you. Finally, someone fucking... Because yeah. like, you think yeah. I'm making this up? Yeah. 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 And uh, so... And we talk about... I mean, he's got... He's still a doctor, so his brain was like... He wasn't completely... Uh, just like one of us, but he was enough uh, you could talk to him and he'd laugh yeah. at something. Because, you know, like they just... Yeah. You know, yeah, they're out yeah. there. I mean, the good doctors. And I want are them out there. to be out there. Yeah. I want them to be a little fucked up because yeah. I don't want them. I like want me. you to be smarter than I am. Yeah, well, yeah, they're out there. Yeah. But the one thing but that was... I've learned is, you, you know, we have no problem firing friends and all these other types yeah. of people. I mean, you know, within fifteen minutes in a doctor, yes. ten minutes talking to a doctor, this isn't a good fit. Yeah. Just say yes. thank you for your time. Yeah. Get up and fucking leave. Yeah. We've yeah. been conditioned to, to take their, and it's not, you know. I always call like a GP, a Google <laughs> practitioner, because yeah. they're yeah. just like, "Hey, what's your symptoms?" Like, hold on, WebMD. Yeah, you and, got cancer, uh, and you My... can't expect them to know everything. Right? Because no, they know it. their right. specialty. Yeah, but a general practitioner, they don't really have a specialty. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, mostly yeah. just flu. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, but the the like, you are responsible for your health. Just you like oh, your, oh fuck yes, one hundred percent. And so when I see these people, just you know, doctor one time wanted to put me on. Uh, I don't know, some kind of drug. I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm taking that, man. He's like, well, I'm like, I don't know, but that's not the answer. So and then we, f- we fucking got rid of him. Yeah. yeah. And then we did a different test, didn't need the drug. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's See, what I, I, I had doctors and over like, the last few years that said, many of them, that said, look, I, I don't want you to Google any of this. You know, even with like the hip replacement, I don't want you to Google it. I don't want you to just listen. Don't, don't believe what you read online. All right. <laughs> but then. For each time that I found the doctor that I really knew what they were doing the, yeah. and worked out, the first thing they said is, I want you to go look at this video. I want you to go yes. to the Cleveland Clinic website or yes. the University yeah. of Michigan website, look this up, and then read everything. This is actually the nurse before I went in. Read everything that you can so when you come in, you you're can not ask a, better questions. Yeah, you're not a fucking read. Yeah, yep. 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 You're it's not like, an idiot okay, about it. yep. I get how this works now. You, this fucker doesn't want me to know a goddamn thing, so he can just have me, so, you know so what I'm he, saying? Yeah. This one doesn't want me to ask really stupid questions. He yeah. wants me to be educated on what's my, going on. And it's it's the, the, the uh, I remember when I went in for uh, physical therapy for my ruptured bicep tendon in my hip. And I sat down, super nice people. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming back. Mm-hmm. What do I got to do? It's not hard to rehab a hip. No, you got to you got to wake your glute up. You got to. It's not super hard, right? No, it's bicep simple. tendon. What do you do? Your bicep tendon's primary function: pronation, supination, secondary flexion. Got to wake the shoulder up because you've been in a cast for two two weeks. You know, a couple shots of suspension. Yeah. Fucking do it. You right, know, and, and so like, and not that I'm better than these people are. No, but what did what did the, Ron uh, Swanson say when he went into Lowe's when the guy's like can I, I help know, you I, I know, know more, more than, than you, you. <laughs> but do, like doctors hate people like some of them do because I think it make your job easier we man know some stuff mm-hmm. and it's like when I was arguing we were talking about it earlier when the doctor's like you can't lift more than 20 pounds and I'm like well when I travel how am football, I supposed to carry this hog around yeah kid? <laughs> <laughs> my 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 bags I've weighed them because we've flown before mm-hmm. my bags weigh about 40 pounds am I supposed to get an assistant well no that's fine well wait a minute what about when I go down to my mom's house and she has a round hay bale and they're eight, 900 pounds? Am I going to say, no, mom, 73 years old, you roll that shit into the barn? Like, what's the deal here? I'm not some 65-year-old. I'm getting all yeah, heated, yeah, I can tell. Yeah. I'm not some 65-year-old couch potato. Um, you know, like 20 pounds, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, well, just, you know, just, 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 you just, just, you could, well, you could do 20 pounds in each hand. Huh, Okay. So what I'm just, I'm just going to breathe <laughs> while I squat instead yeah. of hold my breath. Yeah. yeah. And then my surgeon who I ended up going back to, he's like, mm, yeah, okay. Just don't tell me what, what you're doing, but that makes they sense. Just, I think yeah. they just don't want the liability. You know, if you can have a conversation with them to say, you know, Hey, look, this is what I know I'm you, considering. Yeah. 
you know, and if they say no, explain to me why it's no. Just like why 80 pounds instead of 90. Right. You know, and right. if it's 80 percent, well, fuck, yep. I squat. You know. And then I'm the I'm the I'm the guy that whenever I go see before I went to back to my surgeon as my cardiologist, I went to a Marfan specialist and. <laughs> I sat in front of I sat in front of three doctors. Shut up, Jim. What a horrible fucking doctor! And I was talking about. <laughs> so, are you, what are you like, an orthopedic surgeon? Yeah. I'm Marfan mm-hmm. specialist. Yeah. <laughs> so, you? one of the women, I'm like, you well, work on Martians? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude, that's awesome! <laughs> I fucking knew it! I knew it! <laughs> you got five clients. I'm calling Jim. <laughs> yeah, but they pay really well. Yeah, yeah. That's right. plan to but, uh, pay you know, green and, and goo. I, I'm like, yeah, I want to lift weights, and this is what I'm thinking. And the woman's like, well, have you tried yoga? It's a great workout. And I'm like, yeah, if, if yoga's a workout for you, you're in really bad shape. It's stretching. Mm-hmm. I've done it. It's stretching with a mystical. Yeah, I've, it's not hard. Well, what about Pilates? Yeah, I did that too. It's easy. And, okay, I, and I said I did that's it. That's expensive stretching. Yeah, I did it on the reformer too. Like, it's easy. That's not interesting to me. It's walking. How do I make walking harder? That's how we get around every day. Mm-hmm. That's not yeah. exercise. I'm going to put a weight vest on. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I go back to my surgeon, and he's like, yeah, okay. Just don't do this. Don't do that. What have you done that's really stupid? I'm like, uh, well, uh, three months after <laughs> Do you know surgery, cocaine? <laughs> yeah. Three months yeah. <laughs> after surgery, I pushed a prowler with, with 90 pounds on it. So what's that, 140 pounds or something? I did 10 sets of 40 yards in 20 minutes. He's like, you did what? Like, yeah, that was that was one of the things that I don't probably shouldn't do. Uh, I should probably do that in thirty minutes instead of twenty. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. And then the one near death experience I had was walking up the hill, Eagle Lake Hill. That means nothing to you guys. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And I I got to the top on like my third rep in like ninety seven <laughs> degree Kentucky humidity, and I got to the top and I'm like, this might be. It's it's the only time I really thought like this might be it. I might be done. Yeah. And I'm like, this is. On a scale of one to five, this is a five. I need to keep it around a two or a three. <laughs> yeah. If you, it's like the, yeah, it's, yeah, like yeah. the it's like the it's like the extends. Yeah. 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 It's five will kill you. Well, if I did four of these, it would have yeah killed yeah. me. You know. And so you, and I and I told him this, and he's like, "Well, don't do that." Yeah. <laughs> got it. You know. But like Jim said, they're work with you. He understands. Like you know, I, I got to tell you, you can't do this. I know. I understand. I, I get I th- it. I think then, what we need to keep in mind though is. You know, there are a lot of meatheads out there that are speaking to these same guys that are, as you were talking about before, about strength coaches that don't know They're how to communicate. Like fucking yes. They're being yep. fucking idiots. Yep. Like, you're yep. fucking, do, you know, I'm doing this fucking shit. You don't fucking get it. Steroids you know? don't ever cause a problem. Yeah. yeah. So, uh-huh. I mean, so <laughs> in that regard, I think it kind of goes full yeah. circle yes. Yes. on how you communicate yes. to Yes. The physician, you still got to pick the right physician. Yes. That's the right fit. Hundred percent. But then, how you communicate to them, and even how you look when you go in the office, it's little stupid shit like yep. this. How they're going to treat you? It's going to it's going to make a difference. Yep. If I go in, you know, wearing fucking hoodie and sweatpants, I'm going to be treated yeah. differently than if I go in wearing. Well, here's know, the thing: to give a shit about your appearance. It doesn't have yeah. to be yes. perfect, but yeah. at least give a fuck. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Yeah. It's uh, it's I was but I was that's telling a whole nother... on that topic, we're gonna go down that rabbit hole. I was telling one of my uh one of my athletes came comes in just looking awful. I'm like, You went out in public like that? I'm like on Sunday morning when I'm sitting on the couch in my sweats. I don't even look that bad. And and yeah, and, <laughs> and I gotta go down to the store, I'll put on a pair of pants and a t shirt and shoes, and then when I get home, I'll take them off and put every my sweats time back you, on because that's how I present myself. Every time in you public. walk outside, you are presenting your your family as a brand. Hmm. and it drives me nuts and my wife like wherever we go she's like i represent you man so yep. I, you're gonna see some schlep walking around yep she's like everyone knows you not everyone you know what i'm saying they like, do in though. a town yeah yeah you know, and they and now that the schools the football team's gotten better yeah. and it's and i always say like i just want you to give a shit so i see these guys with like huge mohawks right with a million piercings and they got the leather jacket they sewed on the patches i have mm. That, you know what? That took some fucking work. That's it's fine that you want to present yourself, but at least you gave a shit. Yeah. yeah. Instead of it's an image you're trying to portray. Yeah, and you I actively yeah, went yeah. into and that. And I'm not. Yeah. And and so I have more respect for that than some uh, 
some f- fucking ham planet going in their PJs at two uh, two p.m. on fucking Walmart. Like, dude, yeah. come with on. your with your bed slippers on. And I always wonder at what point did you oh, just, give up? Yeah, like you just said, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I'm not this, and like it, it's got to be insane. That's yeah. it, tapped out. Yeah, yeah. done. Yeah, fucking it's, yeah. That's my new word, ham planet. I like that. I like that. So that that that, that would tie back to the internship thing too, as well. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. and it, like I said, you don't have to. You know, we I wear just a plain t-shirt but at least yeah. it's clean yes it's not wrinkled yes it's how it's it's i was telling my one of my guys and i say stand up with your shoulders back and your eyes straight yeah i mean yeah. even today i wore a new fucking shirt. Nice. Shit. Nice. Shit. you know i'm brand new right out of the pack actually i washed it first i'm getting one of those thank god nice. i hate that chemical i smell. hate that fucking smell yeah yeah, yeah. Smells like but butthole. When I it told comes one of my me. guys, I'm like, dude, you can- when I saw Dave's name on the order you, you form, get it on Jim I, I, I gave it, you know, the old, uh, yeah, the old, the old yeah. how do you do? Yeah, jimwendler.com. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's uh, talk. There's about no three X <laughs> fucking hoodies though. I had to order no. a fucking two X. Yeah. Uh, no, because they're sold out. Yeah. Or of that? Out. This? No, no, I got the other. The, the yeah, because we sold out. The five pounds or whatever. Yeah, we sold out of those things quick. Yeah, that, that's a better design actually. Oh, I love that's that. What you need to get. I like that. Dude, those, the, I think it's that hoodie. It is the best, softest hoodie I think it, I've had. It looks yeah. awesome. I'm totally getting one of no, those. No, I'm, I'm talking. Oh, the, the other one? Yeah. Like it, some, yeah. And sometimes I think you just get a better batch from whoever. Yeah. And then the next time you get a fucking batch. You, like, you do. Oh, it's, it's, it drives it, me bananas. Yeah, it's crazy. How can you fuck up a t-shirt? Yeah. Oh, you'd that's, be surprised. That's made by oh, a machine with a, with a, with yeah. a. Yeah. Uh, Isn't this. Uh, whatever. Well, I mean, I mean, just the blanks that we get. Yeah. It's like, God damn, how. Yeah. How can this be one, different than it's the same fucking thing? But it's not and like the serial numbers one different. It's yeah. the same thing, yeah. And what? the sleeves Ugh. one is, you know, 7 inches long, the other one's 3. Ugh. How can I can't, the, sh- I can't things, show off my pipes. These things here I usually can't wear cuz the forearms are too tight. I'm like in total sales mode right now. <laughs> but the fucking forearms fit. I mean, it fits. Yeah. It's a, it's a good deal. And ladies and, and gentlemen, lightweight. his forearms are huge. huge. Yeah, forearms are fucking huge. Triceps look big. I can Traps flip the hood up. Traps you know, great. I can right. fucking flip this hood up for That's my next right. spider bar workout. <laughs> and we all know bench pressing is 100% triceps. No chest. Yes. No shoulders. Yes. Zero. I've seen it happen. Science. <laughs> science <laughs> fucking newton weird science do you know all the words to weird science no uh, but that's a great movie uh, that's a good oh, movie that's a good one. fucking chat give me the keys man yeah. give me the keys i'll Dude, drive man give chet, me the keys he's fucking dying bill paxton died did he chat died you're stewed but what <laughs> yeah he uh did he really yeah he had some kind of surgery and really? uh, something happened i'm almost positive yeah oh yeah, well, I think ending on that chat was, would be a yeah, good thing. Chet, yeah. yeah. All right. Chat it is. Yes. What? <clears throat> chat was the big blob of shit, though, right? Yes. Yeah, he was not a good dude. Yes. He was like the military guy. Yeah. <laughs> he had a haircut you could set your watch to. What yes. movie is that from? Oh, I don't know. That's from something I can't remember. Who was the chick that was in Weird Science? Kelly LeBrock. Kelly LeBrock, yeah. <laughs> was that it?